The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. Our home. And welcome in live, ladies and gentlemen, to Delaware Live Sports presentation of Delaware High School Football. We are live here with the Central Crew here on Delaware Live Sports at Dover Stadium on the beautiful campus of Dover High School for a big-time matchup between the visiting 2-2 two two Apoquinimic Jaguars and the home team here, the Dover Senators, coming in with a record of 4-1. and one. The Jaguars come into this game Sixth ranked in our Super 7 poll, while the Senators come in ranked number three. Hello, everybody. I'm Patrick Garianis, getting my Glenn Frazier on here yes. today. And I will be bringing in my broadcast partner here, Nick Halliday, on the call. And, Nick, uh, this, is good. this should be a good matchup here. Two ascending teams in this uh, in the first state. And you know, already you've seen a couple impressive games from both teams here. Yeah, correct. I mean, Apo comes in, like you said, at 2-2, two and two, but their losses are to St. Mark's, who we know is really dominant this year, and Middletown, mm -hmm. who's ranked number one. And right now, the only loss to the, for the Senators was against Arundel. We were here for that game, mm -hmm. and uh, they had everything clicking and going right. So that was a tough team. And then Smyrna ended up going to play them and shutting them out 14 nothing. But right. it was it was a good, another hard-fought game down there that took a lot of time for Smyrna to win. So you're right, two teams that are really – and they're both ranked here. You can see when we start our scoreboard, both in the top seven or super right. sevens, Dover at three and Apple at six. Hey, you talked about both of these teams have had some impressive performances already on Delaware Live Sports. You talked about that Apoquinimic game against Middletown. They, they The Jaguars impressed there, Nick. They – they came out, they played really good defense against a pretty solid Middletown offense and battled throughout, just weren't able to, to move the football there. And as you mentioned, Dover already this season, after the week zero loss to Arundel, has turned their season around, ripping off four consecutive wins. Yeah, and you know, you talked about that Middletown Apo game. I mean, at Middletown scored on two big plays. One was a kickoff return, mm -hmm. and the other was a long play. So that just tells you right there how tough that Apoquinimic defense Right. Um, is And like you said, Dover, since that loss, has ripped off uh, four in a row. And right now, I mean, they're outscoring their opponents, you know, probably like close to 30 to, to 10 probably as an average. So they're only giving up 10. Uh, they gave up seven, six, and 12. So, I mean, in their last four games. So yeah, they've, been, they've been good for sure. And, you know, we'll talk a little bit about these guys out and coming out of our, our first commercial break. But they, we were here last week, Dover with an impressive win over Caesar Rodney in that game. Jaquan Kilby over 150 yards and a touchdown. And the impressive receiver, um, John Parker. Parker ha had done a, a tremendous job scoring three touchdowns in that game. We're going to take our first commercial break right here on the pregame show. When we come back, we'll talk more about the Jaguars right here on Delaware Live Sports. Your home, your community. It's not just where you live, it's where you belong. At Dover Federal Credit Union, we understand what it means to be local. We started here and we're not going anywhere. We're as local as it gets and we like it that way. We're not just a financial institution, we are the local credit union that you can trust. Local people, local decisions. Dover Federal Credit Union. Welcome to Premier Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. We're a locally owned outpatient physical therapy practice with convenient locations in all three counties in Delaware. At Premier, we have experienced physical therapists with advanced credentials, but their hospitality, passion, and enthusiasm is what makes the difference for you. Find our convenient locations at PremierPTSB.com. You may have tried physical therapy, but have you tried Premier? And we're back here at Dover Stadium here on the Central Crew 
pregame show here for Delaware Live Sports. Patrick Gianni's Nick Halliday here with you. And Nick, we'll take a little further look into this Apoquinimic Jaguar team. There's talent on both sides of the ball. And I, I know that uh, Coach Timpson has, has shared with you a few things from about his guys. But this is a group that seems like they're on the rise. Yeah, they're young. Uh, well, their talent is young. You know, they do have some uh, – um, some uh, some key players, but the big key player is is Daniel McConomy. Run DMC, as they like to call him. Yes. Um, you know, uh, I saw that on Twitter, and I thought that was just super. It's an cool. amazing nickname. It is, and it's a, it perfectly flows when you look at it, you know, and you and uh, you think about it. Mm -hmm. Run DMC. So anyway, um, yeah, I mean, right now McConomy is just he's the cowbell. You know, he's the he's car carrying all the workload. Um, the the yards are out of control uh the <laughs> attempts are out of control um right now on the on the year he's at 561 hold on, sorry about that five three three he's at 811 yards in the first four game uh five games, five games year, yeah. for them and uh with eight touchdowns you know, uh, talking to Coach Timpson today, he was giving me some updates, and uh, you know, we were joking. We were like, "What's the over/under on carries for him today?" Uh, you know, but um, they, you know, he's basically their offense right now. Um, just you know, um, handing the ball off, seeing what they can do. They got a big line. They got Mr. Elijah Husser, um, who who also is on there, who plays both sides of the ball. You'll notice him today. Right. Probably one of the biggest uh, kids in the state of Delaware, coming in at six seven, three hundred pounds. Um, and then they have the freshman who led the, the state in uh, interceptions last year, Dylan Griffin, who's a sophomore this year at free safety. So, But uh, they're, they're a uh, tightened down defense, and uh, it's going to be tough uh, for Dover today, I'll tell you that. And then Dover's just going to really have to look out for uh, run DMC. Yeah, you talked about it, right? McConomy, uh, you talked about Husser up, up top. You have R.J. Douche, Aaron Hall, uh, Miko Gibson, Ian Beatty as well up top, and Ethan Osebu as a, as a, no, as a second weapon. For this Apple offense, number one, as you talked about, Dylan Griffin, Osebu yeah. on defense, Gavin Tucker. They go Dimir, Milam, Husser, and Ali Kamara on that front line. And and on the flip note here, this Dover this Dover team, talk about talk about what they've done under under Coach Chip Knapp. He's got weapons and he's knowing how to utilize them. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, coming from Wesley, I mean, it's not hard to figure out. They had huge success. Um, why you know when he was there and then with uh the other coach sorry slipped my name but but god bless him rest in peace Drass, uh, Drass, Drass mike yep. Drass, yeah so he's bringing a lot of uh uh knowledge and a lot of uh coaching to the game of high school down here and it's really changed over as you can see and down here in dover they really have three weapons me and you talked about mm -hmm. a little earlier you got parker at wide receiver um kilby who is Probably the best running back, if not the set. I mean, you could flip flop with him and McConomy and, and and maybe a couple others. Pearson maybe at Middletown, but he is their cowbell. You know, he's their you know. And then you got Nassim Cosme, who mm -hmm. we've seen. I mean, Cosme broke a 55 yarder off last week when we were here against CR. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then you had the freshman Jaheim Cole on 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 special teams. Yep. You know, almost ran a kickback. He's had a couple of kickoff returns this year. And then John Parker, uh, three touchdowns last week against CR. But they, those are your, th those are your three that you're going to watch here today on the offensive side of the ball. You know, and then on the other side, it's Jalen Powell. You got to really watch out for. He's really uh, a stud on the defensive end. Jonathan mm -hmm. Payne. Um, you know, and they're they're a really good defense too. I mean, like I said, they've they only given they've given up the highest total in last four games is only 12 points so yeah uh, Mikey Stevenson on the line they're they're good up front too Nick I mean they got they got a lot of a lot of talent on that front line they do. Um, you know Ridgeway you'll hear that name yep. a lot today too you're gonna hear you know they're they're big and stout and both of these lines are big and stout so <laughs> I'm looking for I'm looking forward to a, a nice uh, hard-nosed football yeah much like McConaughey Kilby will go both ways as well playing at outside linebacker another guy to keep an eye out on that defensive side of the ball we saw a lot of him last week. Was was Tyron Abrams? Oh, uh, he was able. He made a lot of great plays I, in the secondary. I didn't even think about that, but the the kid had a cast on too, mm -hmm. Pat, and he broke up every big play CR tried. I mean, he was just Johnny on the spot. And, yeah, and he was a. I, I'll tell you what, he he's probably one of the most t talented defensive backs. He's not that big, but man, can he play? He and really, he really has. You know, when they say he sniffs the ball out, he really does. That defense is going to go Jalen Powell, number 88. Ridgeway, Payne, Harrison, Stevenson across the front of that line. 
Jordan Scheel, Rashid Branch, Tyshawn Milligan, Jaquan Kilby will make up the linebacking core, Chris O'Grady, Tamir Darden Jefferson, Tyron Abrams, Ja'Kai Tillman, and Shamik Morris will be in the secondary for Dover. Their offense, as we talked about, is going to go Stevenson, Daniel Shockley, Jamal Parker, Jason Hoskins, and Keegan Countryman up front. And as Nick alluded to, it's going to be Nasheen Cosby at quarterback, the junior, Jaquan Kilby at the running back, also a junior. And then your receivers are going to be John Parker, the sophomore, Cam Jones, senior, Elijah Bowers will come in as a sophomore, and Jaheim Cole as a freshman. So wow. those are the players yep. to watch. Those are the teams to take a look at. We'll take one final commercial break. We'll come back with the opening kickoff and maybe a little highlight of some other games you're going to be tuning into throughout the state right here on Delaware Live Sports. I would always pass by Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like, from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to. It was like they were friends, not, you know, people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like. To have all the seating now and the big table, the bench seats, it's great. I love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day. It was just a great experience. We loved ours. I would always... I'm Chef Hari Cameron. At Grandpa Mac, pasta's our thing. We serve quality food fast that's not fast food. We make everything in-house and serve something for everyone. We're open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. Follow the noodle to Grandpa Mac. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community based news, free to every reader, because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live, our state, our news, our home. Get the assurance that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high-quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. 302-239-HVAC. 302 -239 Two two three nine four eight two two. Melissa Ellis is part of Four Acre Realty Company. She is licensed in both Delaware and Pennsylvania. Melissa knows that being personable and patient is a key to her success as a realtor. Helping both buyers and sellers understand current market values and conditions puts them in the best position when making an offer or pricing a home for sale. That kind of high-level professional communication and her skill at being a team player put Melissa's clients at ease, knowing she has their best interests at heart. Melissa is also an athlete herself, playing multiple sports so she understands what teamwork means. She is still involved in sports, whether it's sponsoring, coaching, or being team mom for her own two daughters' teams. What sets her apart is how grateful Melissa is for the trust of her clients. She never takes that trust for granted. She affords all people respect and honesty and works hard to be the support system clients need and deserve. Melissa Ellis, strong connections, strong service. High school athletics is not what it used to be. The sporting goods industry has been disrupted. Adding to coach and athletic director daily challenges. BSN Sports stands ready to change the fundamentals of our industry, giving our customers the advantages they need right now.
your dedicated local sales pro is supported with nationwide team service, including sport and category experts. Get the look of D1 colleges and pro teams with our program that streamlines ordering your staff apparel, player gear, and fan wear. Stretch your budget with our fundraising solution. Free and ready in minutes. Our campus branding products are perfect for boosting school and team pride. BSN Sports has the advantages you need right now. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Matt's Fish Camp in Fenwick Island, Delaware. Come check us out. Matt's Fish Camp features seafood classics, coastal comfort food, and chef-driven specials that pair perfectly with our large selection of craft ales, curated wine lists, and camp cocktails. Matt's offers indoor and outdoor dining and is the perfect place to have dinner with your family, happy hour with friends, or enjoy lunch at the raw bar. Matt's Fish Camp in Fenwick Island, Delaware, open seven days a week year-round. See you soon. Barclay Heating and Air. Barclays can work on all brands specializing in air conditioners, gas, oil, and heat pumps. Family owned and operated with over 17 years of experience. Licensed, insured, and a multiple year first aid favorites winner. Barclay Heating and Air offers 24 hour emergency service with service plans available. Customer satisfaction guaranteed. Call 302 653 5971 for a free estimate today. John and Ginger Barclay are looking forward to serving the community. Find them on the web at barclayheatingandair.com. High Five Hospitality, founded in 2004 when three guys teamed up to introduce the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise to Delaware. To date, they operate eight Buffalo Wild Wings in Delaware, Maryland. Also the Stone Balloon and Limestone Barbecue. And let's not forget, Egg Spectation and Five Jersey Mikes throughout Delaware. High Five Hospitality's mission is to operate five brands that serve high quality products with exceptional hospitality. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Lupo Italian Kitchen in downtown Rehoboth Beach. Come check us out. Located inside the Hotel Rehoboth, Lupo serves coastal Italian cuisine with fresh pasta made in-house daily. Lupo features plenty of unique craft cocktails and an extensive award-winning all-Italian wine list. Popular dishes include lobster bucatini, veal meatballs, grilled swordfish, and eggplant parmesan. Lupo Italian Kitchen on Rehoboth Avenue, serving happy hour daily and dinner seven days a week. See you soon. Weekend up at uh, at Middletown High School. I'll say that again here. I had the volume down. Apologies. <laughs> Dover, Apo, seconds away from kickoff. Pat Gary, Andy's Nick Halliday here with you, filling in for the great Glenn Fraser, celebrating a big time high school reunion up at Middletown High School. So we're going to bring this action for you. Dover elected to defer to the second half. Apo is going to start with the ball. And here they go, fresh off the kickoff, right up the middle. This is a great return Dylan across Griffith. the 40-yard line there. What a job there by Dylan Griffith, the sophomore. Nick mentioned him in the pregame, making already a play in special teams. Yeah, you got to watch out for Griffin. He's good, man. He's a tough kid. So um, only a sophomore, but you'll be hearing that name a lot for the next couple of years at uh, APA. That you will. Now this Apoquinic offense will be led onto the field by the sophomore quarterback, Jacob Yard, as well as, as Nick alluded to, number 24. That's the man you're going to want to keep an eye on in the backfield, number 24, Daniel McConomy. May have the best nickname in all of the I state of Delaware, say, Nick. Yeah, run DMC. Makes sense, right? They give it to him. Here he goes off this left edge. He's got some room. Gets around Kilby across midfield first and down. into Dover territory for a first down run. There you go. Takes it about 12 yards. Gets the first down and stops the clock. Great block in there. They were led uh, coming around the edge with the big fella, Elijah Husser, on this right tackle side. Good start here for the Apo offense. They're led. Of course, by Coach uh, Mike Timpson, or Brian Timpson, apologies. Brian Timpson does a great job with this group, Nick. He's got a, he's got a really talented bunch down there. 
Yeah, it's got a lot of young kids too. Like you know, you're reading them off. A lot of sophomores, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of a couple of freshmen playing. So, I mean, they had a pretty uh, good season last year. They with got some the seniors. edge. They got the edge on the other side, Nick. Oh, That's wow. another big time burst from Economy down to the 25 yard line. His Apo offense is in rhythm right now. Looks like he got about 20 on that run. And look at this, we're going with the tempo, Nick. You well, that's tempo here, no no huddle. That's what you want to do, right? You got them already on their heels, just keep putting the pressure on. And look at this, already, timeout time over. They got to talk this thing over. What a start here for the Jaguars, Nick. You get a great kick return by Griffith, and back-to-back -back runs to either side of the field with your All-State running back, and you're in striking distance right now. Yeah, already, I mean, and that's like, let's take, let's take a timeout and talk about this. Uh, just because they don't want it to to get too out of hand too fast, and and you give that confidence up, um, and then Apo starts to really you know try to pour it on. But well, great crowd here tonight, man. There, it is. How about that? It, there's going to be great crowds all around the state, and you know we'll That's get into we some hear. Of, some of the other games that are going on. But uh, just keeping an eye on this one. So far, Apo's been able to get the edge with these two runs, and you got to think that that's the point of emphasis in this timeout with Dover. You got to find a way to, to box McConaughey in. You cannot let him get outside of you. Yeah, you're, you're right there. It's going to be tough. So just an update, though, we are not going to be able to get the St. Mark's Archmere game streaming. There's no internet right now at the building. Um, and as well as you guys all know, it's hard to get internet at the graveyard <laughs> over there. That it is. So we're probably just going to record it and then put it up later. So unfortunately, right now, we they can't get us up and rolling down there. We'll keep you updated on how that score prevails. And another great run here from Economy. And uh, so far up front, Apo has gotten after this Dover defensive line. Big Elijah Husser leading the way on that run. And you can you can say that again. Big. So Nick Alou, 266, 300 plus pounds. That's going to set up a second down and two for this Jaguar offense. Last we last time we seen the Jags against Middletown, it was a tough, hard-fought battle. McConaughey had 48 carries in that game, Nick. 32 of them at halftime. Well, we were, what was the joke? The over/under earlier, you know, how many is he going to have? Here he is again, and he's swallowed up in the backfield. Jalen Powell was not fooled that time. Tackle for loss by number 88. What a great job there by Powell. Trying to stop the bleeding a little bit. And it'll set up a third down and four for this Jaguar offense. As again, they take a look to the sideline and see if they can get their signal from the offensive coordinator. Yard the sophomore. A lot of pink out there. Obviously, breast, cast or breast cancer awareness month in October. Correct. Teams all around the state will be wearing their pink. Selling a lot of socks right now. Absolutely. McConaughey stuffed, stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Great job again. That one led by number 51, which is a tremendous play by Tajan Milligan. We talked about him in the pregame as well. Yeah, number 15, Ja'Kai Tilham was right there also. And there you go, fourth down. And now a fourth down and seven for the Apple offense after a tremendous start. Dover decided to put the run bliss in there and Milligan came right on through for the big tackle for loss. Now, see Apo is gonna have two wide receivers to the far side. Gonna have an H back over here to the near side and a pistol set. McConaughey behind Yard. Here's the snap, Yard drops back to throw. He's gonna go down the middle. He's got a guy, it's intercepted. Pick. And there's that young man again that we talked about in the pregame, it's Abrams. He's around the sideline, gets across the 24-yard line, cast on his arm, no problem. He picks up where he left off last week, Nick, forcing a turnover early in this one. Pick six, and we talked about him, like you said, early. Abrams, he gets it. Uh, he's tough, like I said, and that, that ball was just floating up. Uh, quarterback didn't see the, see the safety, or he was playing on the other side, and left that ball up in the air, and Abrams went and stole it. He was looking at the defenders, and. The Apo receiver did have him beat, but there he is. Abrams on the spot. Wonderful job there by the senior defensive back. Now we get a first look at this Dover offense, and they are dangerous, Nick. You had mentioned Nashim Cosme. He's the guy leading this offense, the junior quarterback. Parker in motion. They're going to give it to Kilby up the middle. He barrels his way through. 
for about a three yard gain. Tackle made there by Dimir Milam. We're gonna say his name quite a bit, number 58 in white. Another run heavy offense in Dover. They'll throw it every now and then. You gotta, you mm -hmm. gotta be, you know, they'll throw a wrinkle in there, so you gotta be ready for that. That they will, Nick. John Parker comes in motion. He'll line up next to the quarterback. Cosme, they go up the middle again, and that's a nice job. Elijah Husser, Husser. coming up with the tackle of Kilby. Maybe a half a yard. It'll bring up third down and five. Yeah, Husser's a uh, problem. Just right there as you can see him in the screen. I mean, he's, he's just a man child. He's a... He's, he's a same size as the offensive or defensive lineman in the pros. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. He'll play both sides of the ball tonight. Cosme in the gun. Kilby to his right. He drops back to pass. Looking, he's got time. He's running out of time. He's going to throw this one away. No receiver over here. Well, he uh, was outside the tackle box, go, and that is the new rule, rule here yeah, in the state right. of Delaware. Smart play by the quarterback. Doesn't take a sack. Doesn't force a turnover, but a nice three and out by this Apo defense coming off a turnover. Yeah, exactly. Set up a punt. And they're going to have good field position here. Dover's got one of the better punters in the state, number 43, Brandon Yoder. Back deep to return. Looks like Haji Bell. And Bell is a, is a guy to keep an eye on back there. Senior, he's back deep. He's at the his own 33, 34 yard line. And the heels of Yoder is at the 15. That'd be an impressive boot if he could do it. Snaps high, gets it, boots it away. It's a wobbler. Goes across midfield, takes an apo bounce. And they're going to have short field position here. Stay right in their territory, so. Yep. So, they Nick, are. here we go. Both teams getting a drive under their belt. Apo moved the ball, however, a turnover. Stop their drive and Dover, three and out. Couple other games to keep an eye on around the state of Delaware. We'll get you a score update. St. Andrews, they were struggling mightily against Tower Hill. That was a 4 p.m. kickoff. Another game that was underway was St. Elizabeth Indian River. Last time we checked, it was 14-0 early. Vikings on top of Indian River in that game. As we talked about, a couple other games around the state of Delaware. St. Mark's Archery is going to be a good one. We'll have updates throughout. Smyrna, St. George's tonight as well. Yeah, that should be a decent game. We'll see how that goes, too. Got to keep an eye on that. And they go to McConomy. Up the middle he goes. Five, six yards on first down through the teeth of that Dover defense. Yeah, and they're going to see a lot of McConomy, so they're going to be coming up that gut and around the edges a lot. You're going to have to pay attention. I mean, uh, you know, hopefully they got enough defensive players to uh, – be ready for this run game and they can last four quarters because they're going to wear you down. Absolutely. You see there's a stop and a check with me for this offense. Two receivers to the far side. H back to the near side. Quarterback yard under center. He's going to give it to McConomy. Again, up the middle. Not much room there. Great job by that Dover front. Tackle led there. Number 88. Uh, Elijah uh, Jalen Powell. Nice work right there by Powell, as well as a scene in the, on that play was Nicere Snipes Guzman, number seven. There's a name. It's a cool name. So <laughs> once again, yeah, another opportunity here. Third here we down, are, they third force short. a third and three. Yard under center. He'll take the snap. He'll give it right to McConaughey. They're going to try and get to the edge. He gets around one, but he will not get around two. There's a flag, flag on the field. We'll see what it is. Tackle was made by number 23, Troy Johnson, but let's see what the penalty marker's for here, Nick. Usually that means holding. Uh, that's what I think it's going to be. No. no, I mean, the Apo's pointing at Dover. The officials want to talk this one over. White hat here. Face, Face mask. mask. There it is. Face mask on Dover. So that's going to give Apo a first down and keep this drive going. What a start here for the Jaguars, Nick. Aside from the turnover, I mean, they, they've had a, a very good start on both sides of the ball here. 
Yeah, they have right now. I mean, and uh, Dover's struggling, even after the interception, you know. And they're going to mark this one off from the 42, so it should be at the 20, oh, five-yarder. It was a five-yard variety. Still good enough for a first down. And this offense will take a look at the sideline, get their signals. Economy will be in the backfield. They're going to go with the old I formation, Nick. How about this? I love it. Old school football right here. They give it back to McConaughey on the lead. Kilby comes up with the tackle. He's going <laughs> to fall forward for a five-yard gain. Running back on running back crime right there. I was going to say how ironic, huh? So far, as is Apo's recipe has been, they've been getting chunk yards on first down. Dover's been able to at least force third downs. Let's see if that trend continues here. I formation, two receivers to the near side, a lone wide receiver to the far side. They're going to go with a reverse here. Why not? Oh, he's got some room. This is Osubi. First down pickup right there. Osebu with a tremendous run. On the end around, hey, you go 24, 24, 24, 24. Let's fake it to him and give it to one of our other weapons. And yeah, as they key in on him, right? Ethan Osebu is is one of Glenn's favorites. He loves <laughs> Ethan Osebu. And how about that? He comes out here, makes a play early in this one. Yeah, he had a lot of space. Yeah. Quick, quick another first down there for Apoquinimic. And he'll go right back to McConaughey. He's got an opening and inside the 10 to 5 touchdown run. DMC. And that was a quick touchdown, and that's how fast he can hit when he's on when he's running. You gotta really be ready for him, and he can break through that line and break tackles and breaks off 25 there. What a what a job up front by that Jaguar offensive line. And McConaughey did the rest. As the Jags on the road will get this scoring started. 6-0 with 6.03 to go here in the opening quarter. Are they kicking? Extra I'm not point. sure if they, I believe they in. do have a girl kicker. Chloe Lee. There you go. Coming in to attempt the point after touchdown. Snaps good, holds good. Lee's kick is up and wow. also good. Great so kick by her, how about huh? that? What a start here for the Jaguars. Seven, nothing. They lead over Dover. We'll go to commercial break when we come back. More action right here on Delaware Live. Sports powered by 302 Sports. High Five Hospitality, founded in 2004 when three guys teamed up to introduce the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise to Delaware. To date, they operate eight Buffalo Wild Wings in Delaware, Maryland. Also the Stone Balloon and Limestone Barbecue. And let's not forget, Egg Spectation and five Jersey Mikes throughout Delaware. High Five Hospitality's mission is to operate five brands that serve high quality products with exceptional hospitality. Hi. Daniel McConaughey gets the scoring started for Apo with a 22 yard scamper into the end zone. As Apo leads seven to nothing about midway through the first quarter. As now the Dover offense will come back out onto the field after a three and out on their opening possession. That's going to be John Parker as well as Nehemiah Williams back deep for the Senators. It's going to go to Parker. He fields it at about the 15. He can move. He's got the edge. They got the blocking. Across the 40, there's a penalty yeah, marker hold. out there. Parker's going to go across the 40-yard line to go down. No, he's not. He's, he's still on his feet. Oh, my God. Inside the 30, down oh to the 26. God. I'm worried. That there's going to be a it's penalty mark back. and it's going to come back. But what an effort by number one. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Kids is a sophomore. He's special, man. He came out of his shoe for that one, Nick. Unfortunately, that effort is going to be called back. More than likely on a hold right here. And it's a block in the back against yep. Dover. Yeah, it's coming back. I, I saw it. It was ready to. Almost an electric play for the Senators. Yeah. That's what they were looking for. That's what they needed. 
shot themselves in their own foot right there. But here you go. Here comes this Dover offense back out onto the field. Cosme, the quarterback, will come in. Looks like Parker's going to have to sit out at least one play with the shoe coming get, off. Get his laces fixed. <laughs> and Apo catches a break there. And Dover going to spread the field out. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Running backs split behind Cosme, who's in the gun. And then they're, they're going to go trips to the near side on the motion. And there's a penalty marker. I don't think they were lined up right, Nick. Nah, illegal formation. Usually that's what that means. Somebody had to get on the line of scrimmage. Oh, no. Off Encroachment. Sides. Someone jumped on Apo. Yeah. Encroachment came across. So there you go. There's a free five yards. That's, that'll work right there if you're uh, if you're a Dover fan. Yeah, especially on you haven't run a, a run a, haven't run a play, you'll take it. First and five for the Senators. Kilby in the backfield. It'll be to the left of Cosme, in the gun. He'll take the snap. It's an option play to get it to Kilby. He oh, breaks some ankles. He's across oh midfield, down to forty, and he steps oh. out of bounds. Oh but that my. little hesitation, Nick. Had people left oh in the dirt. Oh, my dirt. God. Wow. Talk about an ankle breaker. I'm going to have to go back and watch that one later on. Jaquan Kilby is one of the state's finest running backs. He's getting a lot of college interest, and you can see why. What a run. Down to the 39-yard line. Now Dover trying to get some things moving. That's their first first down of the game. Parker back in. He'll be behind Cosme. Kilby will be flanked to the right there in the backfield. They give it to Kilby. Up the middle. Milam gets his paws on him. But Kilby's going to fall forward for a gain of four or five on first down. That's mission accomplished for Coach Chip Knapp and his offense. You get four or five yards on that's the first it. down, Nick. That's what you want. And that that's exactly what uh, they're, the, you know, they're running – basically the same offense with with Apo and they're the same way they want to dig up you know turn out some big yards on first down make it easy to get a first down Parker in motion they're going to give it to Kilby up the middle he breaks through helmet is off the field usually you see that blown That's dead they closer. let this one go it's gonna be a first down for Kilby on the carry up the middle another six yards for him he's tough to bring down and just great push by that interior line of Dover of Shockley, Parker, and Hoskins. They're clearing guys out right there, Nick. And that was Husser's uh, helmet that came off, so he's got to come out for a play, which uh, is always a positive if you're <laughs> for Dover on the offensive line. Cosme in the gun. Parker to his left. Kilby behind him. And I think that's a blown play. Cosme's going to fight his way up the middle, but that was doomed from the get-go. Tackle made on the play by Gavin Tucker, number three. Yeah, clearly, clearly that was a blown play, like you said there, Pat. Someone went the wrong way. Yeah. I'm not sure yep. who it was. Apo trying to figure some things out. Dover, they gave this one up the middle. It's Kilby again. He falls forward. He's going to get about two or three on the tackle there. Looked to be Jordan Scheel coming up. I'm sorry, not Jordan Shield. Tyler Shane. Apologies. Tyler Shane right there coming up and making the play. As well as Milam. So third down upcoming now for Dover. Third and about four. So it's been Kilby, Kilby, Kilby. See if they run something different here and try and get them zeroed in. Oh, he's on the out now. Here you go. They go up the middle. This is an Nice run, nice tackle right yeah, there. Yeah, I was going to say, good tackle. Antoine Osborne on the tackle. That was number 12, Shamik Morris, the freshman, and that's on the carry. They wanted, they put Kilby out thinking that people were going to uh, key on him out there, try to open up the middle, but Apo was not fooled or falling for it. So fourth down and three for Dover. Offense staying on the field, and here comes their version of the earthquake, yeah. Nick. Yep, we've seen this too. Parker and Kilby in the backfield. Let's see what they do. Apo trying to get adjusted here. Parker had Parker's three touchdowns. Keep it. Parker had three. It didn't work. It didn't work. And I don't think he got no, it. No, he did not. He is short. 
What a job by that defense. That, that looked like what, a, what work right there by Haji Bell. Coming up and making a stop, and what a job by the Jaguars. What a start. It continues. The first quarter continues here. Yeah, good job by them. They were not fooled. And like I said, Parker scored three touchdowns out of that formation last week against CR. But I'm guessing that Timpson and them saw the film on that. They had that sniffed out. Absolutely. Great job here by Apo Dover. We're able to move the ball there, unable to finish the drive off. And now this hot Jaguar offense led by McConomy comes right back onto the field. Yeah, after that 25-yard touchdown run last one, we'll see what they do. But at least this time for Dover, they're not starting with such good field position here. And that's four down territory for me too. So I was going for it if I was Chip Nap also. Yard will be in the gun. McConomy behind him in the pistol. Take the snap, give it to McConomy, breaks through, and he's oh. got space. Whoa, what a tackle. What a and they're gonna call a horse collar on this, Nick. I think Jalen Powell got him around the I collar there. It was just a matter of did he did he make contact with another part of the body before doing so? The officials face not, mask. Oh, they're gonna call a face, face mask. mask. How about that? There you go. Knew it was something. It yeah. looked bizarre. Yes. Uh-huh. And that's gonna be five-yard variety, but again, I mean, McConomy had two linemen in First his face, down. but the speed of McConomy to get around those guys to find the opening. Mm -hmm. Sapa, I tell you what, this running game's looking dangerous right here. Yard takes the snap, goes to McConomy oh, again. Nothing nice block. there, Nick. Nothing there. Nice block, though. Um, coming from Ian Beatty, number 59 from Apo. You know, on the tackle there was Milligan again. You saw Powell in there as well as Jalen Peace coming in and making a play. I wonder if Peace is related to Javon Peace. Not sure. I formation for Apo here. Back oh, and he's ripped in the Whoa. backfield. That Powell was shot out of a cannon, Nick. That was uh, Jalen Powell. 66, not 88. Ah, look at you yeah. with the good eyes. Yeah. Mikey Stevenson breaking through for the play. Yep. Yeah. Sack. Tackle for loss. Again, we're, we, we are give our apologies not being able to do the St. Mark's Archmere game. There's no internet right now at the stadium and uh, not sure when they're going to get it fixed. And if they do... Um, but 7-0 uh, Archmere. There we go. Yeah, we'll keep you up to date with the score there. How about that? Stevenson, only a sophomore, Nick, coming through and making that play. <laughs> big kid. That's a big kid for a sophomore. Yard in the gun. Motion coming. They're going to go with the speed sweep here. This is Bell. He gets to about the 40-yard line. It'll set up a fourth down and four. Yeah, you got to punt. And here comes the punting unit, Nick. Yeah. Nice work there by Dover taking advantage after the penalty yes. coming up with a stop here. Yeah, I was going to say after the penalty, you're right, Pat. They did a good job of stopping McConomy in that running game here for Apo. Back deep for this Dover team is Tamir Darden Jefferson. Uh oh. That was close. Punts away. Gets it away, though. And it chalks uh, up yeah. at about the 33-yard line. And it'll roll down to the 30, and that's where Dover's offense will take over. They had a decent drive that last drive. Nick just couldn't cap it off. Yeah, I, I mean, they did, it and then turned over on downs um, after a big run by Kilby. Um, but, yeah, you're right. Then the defense stepped up for Apo, and they sniffed out the earthquake, and Brought uh, Parker down short, so we'll see what they do on this drive. We shall see. Cosme back into the game. Parker's going to be lined up in the slot up at the top of your screen here. I haven't seen any passes yet, Pat. He didn't have time on the one. He had to throw it away, but they're going to have to get Parker involved. Bring the motion. That, that ball's loose, and I think Apo's got it, Nick. That ball skidded back there. Went off the foot of the quarterback, 
and it's scooped up by Ali, Ali Kamara. Kamara. What a hey. what another break here for yeah, Apo. Yeah, I mean you don't. That's tough, especially on the handoff there, which you knew was going to Kilby. Um, but looked like he just didn't have the snap. Cosme, and uh, that's a huge turnover here in the red zone, basically. I mean, Dover right now has just shot themselves exactly, in the foot here. Yeah. And Apo's got a golden opportunity inside their 30-yard line late in the first quarter to go up by two scores. See if they can capitalize on the turnover here. Dover was not able to capitalize on theirs, that interception by Abrams earlier. But good field position here for the Jaguars. Yard gives this one to McConaughey. Nowhere. And he's able to run through some tacklers. Minimal gain on the play. Looks like they're going to give him a Jam favorable two yards. Jamar Harris as well as Shield come up with the tackle. Second and eight. Got about 20 some seconds, 20 seconds left here to go into the end of this first quarter, Pat. See if they're going to just run the clock, it looks like right now, and switch fields unless they score on this last play as we're down to about 10 seconds. Man coming in motion. Here they go, they're going to throw it back to him. And it's dropped, dropped, incomplete. They had good blocking set up. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a bad throw, and Dylan Griffith had room. He just couldn't haul that one in. And it'll bring up third and eight. You know, as they told us, if it hits you in the hands, you should have caught it. <laughs> hey, he's usually, and Griffith's I usually sure-handed out yeah, there. Yeah, on defense, too. Yeah, I know. Led the state in interceptions last year as a freshman. Just couldn't haul that one in. Now the clock stops, so this this will be the last play of the first Still quarter. Three tenths. And this will be the last play. Third and long. Yard, go under center here. Take the snap, he'll pitch it to McConaughey. They can't get the edge. He cuts up the middle, and that's a good run for McConaughey. And a good tackle made by number 29, Jalen Peace. And there was a questionable holding there on the edge, but they did not call it. And it looks like they're going to give him the yards. He's going to get about seven on that. It's a good cut back there by McConaughey to get what the defense took him. It's going to be the end of the first quarter. It is. Seven to nothing. What a start for the Jaguars. They're leading Dover. When we come back the second quarter, it'll be a fourth, big fourth down and three upcoming right here on Delaware Live Sports. <laughs> assurance that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. 302-239-HVAC. 302-239-HVAC. 239-4822. Get the assurance that you're... And we're back here, ladies and gentlemen. 7 nothing. your score here is a big fourth down upcoming. A couple score updates. St. E's leading Indian Rivers 27-14 midway through the third. How about this one? Smyrna up 28 nothing over St. George's early in the second wow. quarter, Nick, in wow. that game. That's a big, big lead already for As them. As you said, the Hawks over St. Mark's early, and this one's 7 nothing. Here's the fourth and three. McConaughey looking to get the edge. He doesn't get it. Will he get forward? It's going to be a penalty marker. He's going to be about a yard short. And let's see what the call the is. It's a hold. So oh. decision here for Chip Knapp. He didn't get it. He declined this. You get the oh, ball I on down. it, yeah. What a stop for Dover. Both these defenses coming up with some big plays early in this one, Nick. Yeah, again, stopping them on four, uh, fourth and short. That's two stops. Uh, one for each team, so we knew the defenses were tough anyway coming into this game, so. Absolutely. First down, Dover on that one. We got to thank a friend of the, friend of the team here, Marty Sheehan and the Delaware High School football debate. Those guys 
giving us that scene, keeping an eye on that St. E's game. Yeah, we have him uh, and, him oh and Busby. God, Busby's yeah. on the hook this week with the Benny Mitchell picks. I saw that. Uh-oh, uh-oh. We'll see, man. The two cohorts going at it. That runs up Kill the middle. Kill push. Can so get about five. Good first down run. But how about Ed Benny Mitchell, man, our, our colleague, he's, had, he's quite the hit with the guest picker so far <laughs> early in the season. <laughs> some controversial as well as some uh, – People from some other uh, media outlets. It's yeah, been uh, it's been cool. Him and his son and uh, whoever their their uh, special guest is. Yeah, those guys they seem to know ball down there. That's all I gotta say. Cosme in the gun. It's second and five. He'll take the snap. Here you go. Here's your first pass. He drops back. Goes into the middle. Parker. Parker he's got it. it. And, and he, he may be gone. gone. Let's see. Oh, not so fast, Nick. No. He's the 20, gone. 15, 10, 5, and he will. Be into the end zone. Touchdown, Dover. What an answer. Wow. And he goes 50, 60, 76 yards for the touchdown there is Parker. 76 yards. Cosme to Parker. And I'll tell you what, it wasn't terrible coverage. It wasn't terrible coverage. The defender was a little bit behind him. But he got a hand on the ball. And Parker ripped it away and ran into the end zone, beating Griffith, who was gaining on him the whole way for potentially a game-tying score. It all depends on the Yoder extra point, but what an answer for the Senators. How about that uh, concentration to hold on to the ball? Because Griffin was right there. Yep. I mean, it wasn't like it was a bad, it was a, I mean, it was bad defense. That was good defense, and then he just happened to break away, and unfortunately, the ball went into his hands, and Griffin was on the back, and as you see, the fireworks going up over here. But for Job. Dover. What an answer for Dover. All tied up, seven all here early in the second quarter. We'll be back in 30 seconds right here on Del Aware Live Sports. <laughs> I'm Chef Hari Cameron. At Grandpa Mac, pasta's our thing. We serve quality food fast that's not fast food. We make everything in-house and serve something for everyone. We're open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. Follow the noodle to Grandpa Mac. Seven all here, early second quarter. Dover with the answer to 76-yard strike. Cosme to Parker to draw even. We got ourselves a football game here at Dover Stadium. On a beautiful night for high school football. I mean, Nick, we, we got here, it was about 73 degrees. Took the hoodies off. It's going to drop down to about 48 here tonight. Yeah, so you it's told me that. I was, I was coming. surprised, to be honest with you. Right now, it's probably in the low 60s on its way down. Cosme will kick this one away. McConaughey and Griffith back deep. And they're going to boot it deep. Economy. Had an 86-yard touchdown return for a touchdown against St. George's last week. Takes this one from the seven. He's got room. He's going. He's At the 40, midfield, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. What an answer. Back and forth we go. Run. DMC for six. I just said it. Last week he had an 86-yarder. This week he's a little short. Looked like it was about 79 yards, but there you go. And that's the threat that McConaughey uh, run DMC has when you're playing against him. The scamper goes for about 93 yards it was 93? to the house. Okay, I that inside the 10. I didn't. I thought he was a little, little longer, but nice. What a score! That young man again. We're seeing some of the best talent in the state here tonight, ladies and gents, especially at the tailback position, and just overall the weapons. You include Parker in the mix there. You, 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 you include Osebu in the mix there as well. I mean. Griffith in the mix. There's just so much, so much skill level out here. And timeout being called here. They're pointing in the direction of Apo, but Dover was running guys onto the field. So they said timeout Apo, though. That's how the officials pointed. But what a run. What a run back. Wow. After Dover answers, wow, Apo unrelenting, and like I said, you know that he he had that 86 yarder, um, 
uh, kickoff return, and that was against uh, St. George's. I mean, you got to watch kicking it to him, man. I mean, he's back there. Griffin, Griffin's not, not someone you want to be able to kick to either, but that was a big play by McConaughey. Yes, it was. And that, that one, it was an 85-yard touchdown, sorry. Uh, and it was against CR. Either way. And here comes Lee to attempt the extra point. We'll have some score updates here after this. Chloe Lee. Kick it again. Senior. A lot of girl kickers around the state. I know Middletown uses one too. And Lee's extra point is up and Look good. That. Look at that. 14 to 7 is the score. And, uh, you know, Nick, we'll, we'll take a look around the state here. A couple score updates for you. Thanks to Andre Smith, Caravel Jr., Craig Miller. 26-yard run, 7-0. Caravel leads that one, 7.04 left in the first quarter. Wow. Okay, and we have them um, next week, and they're going to be on the show, Caravel. Yeah, and, and, I mean, that's they're taking on Odessa. So that's an up-and-coming program yes. that's taking on a, a, tradi a traditional power. And then, again, from, from our our, our – um, our friend of the show here, Marty Sheehan, 33-14. to St. E's extends their lead at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Wow. What a turnaround, though, for Indian River. I mean, last year they were in the almost in the championships now, and they're, they're just having a down year. Lost a lot of key players, though. So, But uh, that, that division uh, 3A is, um, is, is, is a tough division this year with Seifert, mm -hmm. uh, Laurel, who just – Crushed Woodbridge last night. Um, they Indian got some River good just took down Seifert last week. Yeah, see, there you go. Yeah. I mean, it's hit or miss. So, update here. St. Mark's has tied it up 7-7. Seven to seven. Unfortunately, we are having technical difficulties there. There is no internet available for us there, and it's not very good to – Use hot spots. Even your cell phone doesn't work there very well. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a dead it's, zone. It's a shame. It's a shame. We were excited to bring that one to we you guys. We will have it up uh, after, record it, and put online. So. Yep, so keep an eye out for that one. I mean, you'll hear the score updates here, and just tune in a little later tonight, and you can, tech, you can check in on the, uh, on the game. You can watch it. So here we go. Oh, outside. outside. Oh, boy, ball's loose. It and fell on it. Smart decision there. I believe that is Tayshawn Allen. Number nine? Yep, number nine. Uh, so then, uh, apologies, that was Christopher Grady. Christopher Grady. Falling right on top of that. Dover's going to have good field position they here. They are. They are. Look at the answer again. And you can see the senator down here, the mascot, Nick, down here getting the fans all oh, fired up. Oh, there he is. Nice work. The colonial, colonial <laughs> senator. <laughs> Wonderful. I tell you what, what an atmosphere down here at Dover, Nick. A lot different than last week when we were against CR. I guess they had limited fans with all the issues going around, but glad to see them back full Option strength. Option play, nice. and Parker's got room. Oh, boy. Here Across we go. the 40. He gets a block, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 30-yard line. But how about that answer for Dover? They all get sucked in on Kilby, and it opens Parker up for a big-time 20-plus-yard carry. 35. 35 there on that. There you go, 35 yard run. And Dover looking to answer here. Back and forth we go. Cosme in the gun, Kilby behind him. Parker comes in motion. They go to Jaquan up the middle. He pushes across the 30. Gets down to about the 28, 27 yard line. Another five yard run on first down. Dover getting a good push here up front now, Nick. Yeah, that was a nice uh, nice play, though, with that option and the sweep to uh, uh, Parker. That was a nice drawn-up play there. And it caught it caught them off guard, so it was a great time to call it, too, because they're all looking Kilby right now. Parker will be in the slot to the top of your your screen. So all the way in. Actually, we, we call him almost a wing. Yeah. He comes in motion. Cosme, he's going to keep this one. This is a bizarre. Look at him go, Nick. Look at the he's speed. Nassim Cosme scores. What a job. 
Oh, 20, my Lord. 26-yard touchdown run by Cosme. What a run. He played the old read option, got around the edge, and a nice cutback. Potentially Dover looking to tie this one up. Fourteen to thirteen on the run. Nine forty one to go. Back and forth we've gone. Yoder is blocked. Extra blocked. point is blocked. That could loom large in this one, Nick. We'll have to keep an eye on that one. As we go with 9.41 to go in the second quarter, 14 to 13. Apo has the lead. We'll be back in 30 seconds right here on Delaware Live Sports. Presented to you here by 302 Sports. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Lupo Italian Kitchen in downtown Rehoboth Beach. Come check us out. Located inside the Hotel Rehoboth, Lupo serves coastal Italian cuisine with fresh pasta made in-house daily. Lupo features plenty of unique craft cocktails and an extensive award-winning all-Italian wine list. Popular dishes include lobster bucatini, veal meatballs, grilled swordfish, and eggplant parmesan. Lupo Italian Kitchen on Rehoboth Avenue, serving happy hour daily and dinner seven days a week. See you soon. That was a 27-yard touchdown run. Uh, and that was a heck of a run, Nick. Yes, it was. 27-yard run for Nassim Cosme, but a blocked extra point keeps Apo in front. 14 to 13, 941 to go. And now the kickoff. Yoder boots it back away. Griffith will field it this time. They didn't want to go to McConomy. Griffith going to go to the his sideline and he's rocked right at the 28 yard line what a job by big number 51 Tyjon Milligan with the stick that's where this Apo offense will take over first and 10 yeah big hit there but that that extra point we'll see how that uh, how that works out towards the end of the game there that, that it, missed extra point you know Benny Mitchell our colleague he texted us here after the kickoff return and said, special teams, it's always one-third. It's always the forgotten one. It's one-third of this game. And you're talking about the, the the kickoff return. Well, there they got it on the um, the point after touchdown. So, Apo has been winning the special teams game for sure in this one. Yeah, and I, I think they're going to think about next time kicking it deep to McConaughey. <laughs> and well, that's what they did. Yeah, they went right to him. So, first and 10, 29-yard line. I formation for Apo. They go back to McConaughey. He's got nothing. Nowhere. Nothing doing. Good job setting the edge there for Dover by number seven, Nasir Snipes Guzman. He had a couple players in there. And he just did a good job. He made come up. McConaughey had to yeah. cut that one back. And Harris that's was where your there. help's at. That's yeah. where your help's at. Yep, Harris was in there, had a couple of players in there. Good tackle. He's going to get no yards on that. Second down and 10. Dover mascots loving it out here <laughs> in the bleachers. After the touchdown run by Cosme, everybody's loving it here in blue. Absolutely. They go to the motion man. Oh. Bell is rocked. Wow. Right at the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you what, these Senators oh, are hitting. Branch. What a hit by Branch, Nick. Woo. That's a big hit. Flew right up there and took your lunch money right there. <laughs> oh, man. Third down and nine. As you, you saw Bell try to turn that up, he got his bell rung, huh? That is the truth. Third and nine. Not a favorable down in distance for this Apo team, but there it is. Stuffed again up the line. You should see the punting unit come in. It's going to be fourth down. And That's four. Branch again with another tackle. 
What a job. What a job they already do over defense. Branch Calhoun coming up with the tackle. Fourth down and four. Apo's going to bring the punt unit on. Noah Hoff, I believe is. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Mason Reinhardt yeah, on the punt. I was going to say Reinhardt's the kicker. Mm -hmm. Oh, it nearly blocked. Reinhardt gets it away. It's a good one. That's going to bounce. Oh, too late. Yeah. Dover's going to let that one. Couldn't touch it there. Let that one bounce. Demi Tamir Darden Jefferson, Jefferson did not want to take a chance there. No. And now the nice punt right there, Nick, by Reinhardt trying to flip the field. It was, and he got a nice little roll. And I would have thought that uh, Tamir might have grabbed that, but that uh, Apo defender was right on top of him. So Our own Glenn Frazier out here. He's getting stuff done even at, at what? the Union weekend. Where is he at? Smyrna leading St. George's 22 to nothing after one. Wow. Caravelle on top, 14-0 over Odessa, 3.42 to go in the first. We'll get to see Caravelle Woodbridge next week. That's our game of the week. Yeah, we will. Cosby gives this one off. It's Kilby up the middle. He gets, I'm sorry, down the, the that left sideline. That'll be a first down run. He's able to get some yardage there. Gets about 11. Eleven yards for first. First down and ten. Off the eleven yard run and whistles blow. I think Apo's gonna take a time out here. They said Dover. Oh, okay. Apo, oh. you're right. Okay. So the, they want to make the sure they got the right defense here, Nick. The announcer got us on that, Eric. <laughs> Got us on that <laughs> 708. Oh, well, 708 to go here in the second quarter. Nick, this has been as entertaining as you could have asked for. Yeah, I mean, we and I mean, we talked about it, man. They got some big hitters that can make some big plays, and that's what we've seen. You know, Cosme, Parker, McConaughey. What else could you ask for tonight? Smyrna now up 34 oh, to nothing. Oh, boy, that was fast. Over St. George's. Yeah, that's a respectable program down there. Yeah, it is. Here's another one. Uh, thanks again to Marty Sheehan. 39-14, Saney's up over IR late in the fourth. Kasim Benson, he is him. A fifth? Fifth touchdown run. Oh, my God. For number three. There's another running back in in the state that is just. Here's a deep Everybody pass. This one out. Cosby to Parker again. He's, He's got, got him. And Parker will finish this one off. Touchdown, Senators. 62 yards. 67 yards. 67, sorry, yeah. 67 yard strike. What a beautiful throw by Cosme right in the old bread basket. And Parker's speed just was able to pull away for the touchdown. Yeah, he's impressive. And I, I'll tell you what, you got to give it to Cosme there. He hit him on the run. I mean, that was just a perfect throw and a touchdown pass. And Parker's speed shows there. Unbelievable. What a game we've got here, Nick. Central crew here at Dover High. And Dover will elect to kick the extra point here. Not ready to go for two yet. They take their first lead of the game. Wow, that was a great play. Extra point this time is up and good. 20 to 14, Dover on top. Nick will stay right here. As there's fireworks going off. Look at these, our cameraman Logan Gashler catching a little bit of them there. That's it. What work. 20 to 14, what a game. First half, Woo! How about that, the play action pass. Everyone's gotta account for Kilby, Nick. That's it. Parker, one on one on the back side. I mean, that, that is a tough man to cover one on one. Credit to Cosme for noticing it, putting that ball where only his guy could get it. That was it. I mean, he threw it up and Parker ran underneath it. Mm -hmm. That was a great pass and catch there. And I'm sure we'll be looking for that one on top plays this week. Absolutely correct, my friend. You see right now Apo trying to regroup. Now trailing for the first time in this game. High powered DHS offense. Twenty to fourteen is your score. 
having some fun out here. Looks like some Middletown, Middletown player. Oh, more Dover players out there. Guys. Good time. Yeah. <laughs> guys are getting after me. Hey, they're, they're all answer. having fun out here tonight. That's what it's all about right there. Oh, boy. Another touchdown. For Smyrna. Markel Holman. Oh, jeez. They're in a running clock situation wow. there for the second half. That just tells you how much better and how good Smyrna's gotten since the beginning of the year. I mean, that Middletown game, they shouldn't have lost it. They they really uh, they were hurt themselves. Back. They yeah. were coming back in yep, that game. turnovers, yep, but uh, it's going to be tough. Yoder kicks this one off. It's going to be to Griffith. They're not letting McConaughey hurt him again. <laughs> Griffith <laughs> gets thin. across the 30, down to about the 35-yard line. That's where Apo will take over. You said Griffith a couple times. I just want to make <laughs> it says Griffin on our thing. He, uh, so it is Griffith. Look, he wrote Griffin. There you go. That's <laughs> we. So we were led wrong by. Uh <laughs> 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 Sorry about that. Uh, I thought it was Griffith too, and I'm sitting here mm -hmm. correcting you, but on the on the sheet is Griffith, and then on our, our notes it says Griffin. So apologize on that. that. No, you're good, but man. yeah, Griffith. Griffith, you do have to account for him too on the kickoff. So you got to be ready for that also. Yeah, that's a, a you know, good uh, good, good pickup there for this Apple offense. Let's see what they can do. Yeah, I was going to say, let's see what their answer is here after that big play. This is where it gets tough. Everybody knows where the ball's going, and, and that ball's loose. It's fumbled. Ball's on the on the carpet, Nick. McConaughey was hit right away. Who fell on it? Let's see. Dover says they got it. Nope, nope, second Looks down. Looks like they're going to say, yeah, Apple fell on top. But this is where this is where you got to be careful. Yes, you've you got to be careful here. You do not want to turn it over again in your own red zone. This is where Dover's susceptible to the play action pass. Now I know you got yourself a young quarterback, Jacob Yard. The, the first throw of the game he took was intercepted. They intercepted. Mm -hmm. But right now this Dover defense, these are a smart group of guys. I think they're starting to pin their ears back and, and target 24. Maybe you get Osebu something going here to try and, and, and get some different look out here. I agree. Got to do something different. Bell will come in motion, and they're going to go up to McConaughey, up the middle. Oh, hit broke, hard again. Broke through the first line of defense, picked up about five. But he did. He took a shot on that run. Nice tackle. That was Nasir Snipes Guzman he, we've, again. We've, we've said that name a couple of times. Yes, we have. <laughs> yes, we have. His outside linebacker making some plays. Now they're going to go, Apo's going to go trips to the near side here. Yard. We'll take the shotgun snap. We'll pitch it to McConaughey. He's trying to get outside. There's no Nowhere. room. He breaks it's a tackle. Out. But, oh, boy, oh, the ball's, ball's out. Loose. And Dover's got it, Nick. Dover's got it. I mean, heads to the ball right there. Yeah. Hats to the football. McConaughey just could not. He was bouncing off of guys left and right. Ball came loose and scooped up by Jalen Powell. Sometimes, you you know, in those situations, you just want to go down because that happens sometimes. You get careless after you've been hit three or four times. You know, you only take so many. But that time uh, works out for Dover. And big turnover right now, and the momentum is swung. It is in Senators' favor right now, and they got really good uh, field uh, advantage here. This is the danger zone for Apo. There's no it doubt about it. You don't it. want him to score a touchdown here before the half. Cosme's in the gun. Kilby behind him. Parker in motion. They go to Jaquan up the middle. And he Husser will come up with the tackle, but not before a gain of four or five yards. Yep. We'll Dover's in a rhythm now offensively. They are. And uh, now, now, the, now you're Apo. you got to be looking out for the pass. Here they go, tempo. Uh -huh. Substitution's happening. Dover's right up on the ball. Second and five. Cosme. He's going to keep this one. Up the middle. He's got good blocking. Oh, nope. Nice job, though, by Milam. Number 58 coming up with a big-time tackle. Yeah, he wasn't fooled. Him and the got around his Got around. Nice move to get around his block and Here's the name. for the tackle. So Milam and freshman, number six, Edge Von Brandt. Yeah. I was Ninth say. grader out here making a play. Yeah. Obviously, his brother Ryan is here. He's at VMI right yep. now. Virginia military, good for him. And he's stepping right into his his, his family heritage, That's right? It, stepping yeah. right in here on the field, making plays. And the plays. dad is a um, yep. an assistant coach. Mm -hmm. Third down of four for Dover. 
Cosme getting his guys lined up in a timeout. timeout. They weren't they weren't lined up properly there. And that's just, you know, it's a smart timeout. 4.16 to go in the second quarter. Uh, unfortunately, it's their last time out of the half, but you don't want to take a delay a game here. You could pick no. up this first down. You're in good field position. You want to score. Yeah, correct. I mean, I, you want to make sure you got everything in, in tune, like you said, make sure that uh, you got the right call in or the right formation and do it because this is a big play. This is a big scoring opportunity that can give you a two-touchdown lead you know, might be going into the half. A lot of time left, but if you can turn it down, you know. For sure. We'll see. For sure, Nick. Yeah, this is a, this is a big moment in the game here. It's a one-possession game. This could be a big stop for Apo to try and stop the bleeding if they're able to get a, a stop here. This defense has been on the field quite a bit here in the second quarter. It has, it has. There's another uh, thing to look at. You know, uh, I mean, the, turnovers. The second quarter touchdown was on the kick return. You got to think about that. Yes. Yep. Offense didn't even take the field. Cosme, he's going to look to throw. Up the middle, incomplete. Over shot. He was looking. He, they, he had two seam routes in the middle there. He he chose this, uh, this near sideline looking for Eric Carter, and he just let him a little too much, incomplete. Yeah, that ball was, that ball had some steam behind it. Yes, it did. Is my guy's catching it or no one's catching no it? No one. <laughs> throwing BBs out here. Fourth down and four. This is a big play. This is. This is be, I mean, you need – if they can make a, a stop here, they can get their all defense off the field. Like you said, they've been on for a while. It would be a nice break. But if they don't, Dover's got a good opportunity here. Cosme. He'll take the snap. He'll give it up the middle. And, and that's going to be stopped. Kilby got nowhere. Milam stopped him dead in his tracks. And a turnover on downs. What a stop there by Apo. And they, they, you know, they tried to run that misdirection there with Kilby coming in front. I mean, uh, Parker, but no one was fooled on the offensive line. And uh, Kilby ran right into a wall. That's guys doing their job, right? It's defensive line, and you usually have a gap responsibility. And right there, Milam filled his gap. He was in charge of the dive if it came to him. If it didn't, then that's really not his responsibility. It's just getting pursuit. And it just so happened to be a dive, and he stuffed him for the big-time tackle for loss. And now with 4.07 to go, Apo, if they can put a drive together here, um, you know, they can go down here and, and try and tie this game, take the lead, which is important because Dover will be getting the exactly. second-half kickoff. Exactly. I was just but you took the words right out mm -hmm. of my mouth. They're going to get – so, you, you know, you want to get something here because then you're, you're going into the half, at least with a tied game or down by one. But remember, we had a turnover last time, so we got to make sure – see what happens there. Economy takes the pitch. Dover's Nowhere. just they're sniffing it out. They 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 know that 24 is getting the ball right now. That's Harris and Powell mm -hmm. coming up with the tackle. Yeah, you're right, Pat. They 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 see what's coming. Um, they've seen it enough, and that's where just like Dover throws that wrinkle in with the P the uh, play action. Mm -hmm. Apo is going to have to start doing something a little different. Now let's see if they go ahead and do it here and take a shot. Second down and nine. Yard takes the snap and they give it again, nope, there and there's just are. nothing there. Yeah. I mean, Dover is all over this. Yeah, what a job right there. That ends up being Snipes Guzman as well as Cotton. Jonathan Payne. Big fellas coming through, making plays. Mm -hmm. There's like you said, they're they're not being fooled right now. No, they know. They're watching. They're seeing the formation. They've seen it a few times already. It's good, good, smart defense. They're not going to be fooled by it, so. They're susceptible right now to the play action. Exactly. Nick, you said it, and I agree with you. I think they're very susceptible to it because they are selling out for the run. They are. They <laughs> yard pulls this thing out, and he's got a guy coming up the seam. That could be what they look for. That's going to be a timeout here for Apo. It's their second use timeout of the half. It's a, a big down for them now, too, because you want to try and at least flip the field here. That's it. Again, yeah. Dover, no timeouts. But you don't want to give them the ball back. They're going to be looking to be aggressive on offense and score before the half. Of get course. Those, those two-for-one possessions they can you're, get. You're going to have to get a good punt here, too. I mean, right now, you know, you get a couple of yards to, to flip this field so that Dover doesn't have good field advantage uh, to go into the half. You know, we still got three minutes left. It's third and ten. They really have only been able to run the ball, but now Dover's really sniffing it out. So you got to come up with something creative here soon. 
and especially it would be nice if you could get it done here, keep the ball, and you don't give the ball back to Dover. Here's a score update for you. Malvern Prep, right? The great Malvern Prep, which is right over there in Pennsylvania. Ben Davis, the yes. Phillies announcer, went yeah. there. They lead DMA 3 to nothing at halftime. Wow. Okay. St. Mark's is up 14 to 7. Where's our update, man? You know, where's our guys? Where's our update? I haven't checked my phone. Nope, it's not there. Right before <laughs> the half, Caravelle <laughs> leads 21 to nothing after one over Odessa. Okay. St. Mark's, of course, up over the Auks of Archmere. Here's a, here's a pass, halfback pass, Nick. They're going to let this one, it's Bell going deep, and it's Ow. incomplete. Good defense out there. That was Kilby, wasn't it? No, yeah, that was um, Darden Jefferson. Was it? Okay. Out I there. saw the towel. <laughs> yeah, he's out there deep, and they looked for, I believe that was Reinhardt. Hey, with that, went there you on. go. So the only problem there was you called the timeout. They knew something was up, right? Mm -hmm. You kind of thought about it. So they tried to get it to set up, and it wasn't a bad idea, and it almost worked. But that's they're going to have to do something because you're right. This uh, Dover defense has got their ears pinned back, and they're watching that run. Great job by Haji Bell avoiding stepping up in the pocket. He's not a quarterback, but no, he had a good pocket yeah, presence Yeah, I there. was getting ready to say. Yeah. And then he made a good throw. Yep. Just got tipped. And uh, So Dover gets the big stop that they were looking for, and now it looks like they're going to pin their ears back and go after the rush here. Up the middle, they sell out. They don't get to it. It's a good punt. And it'll roll bounce out. at about the 37-yard line. Uh -huh. So now 2.37 to go. Dover up by six, Nick. They got an opportunity here in front of them where they can score and then get the ball back at coming half. out of the half. Yeah. Get two possessions for one. Well, and, you, and if you're Apo, be ready. Pay attention for that Parker pass because they might try to take a shot deep on play one. They might. Catch them off guard. They might. You know, and this is a trend you've started to see. I would say this has probably started over the last five years. You've seen it at every level of college football. People deferring when they at the coin toss to get the second half possession and have this true two for one. Yeah, I, I, I'm a score first, get the ball, kind of go guy, you know. But you're right. You've seen the trend of that happening. Kittleby, a two-minute drill. He takes the handoff, gets out of bounds. Stop short the game. clock. Good job, good discipline there. By the Apo defense. Gave him two on that. Gavin Tucker and uh, Jaden Glover, both those guys didn't allow him to get outside. Came up, made the play. You're going to look for a shot here. Looks like the great Dover band is getting themselves prepared for a halftime performance. Look at all the cheerleaders down there today. Got, yeah, there looks like there's some. Well, look at this. Oh, they pitched out. Parker makes a man miss in the backfield and falls forward. I'll tell you what, Do Apo had him dead to rights. A couple guys fell down, and Parker's able to pick up about three on the play yeah. and set up a third up, a third down and manageable. Yeah, I was going to say, probably got about three, and you're right. They had him in the backfield, but he made a move and made a defender fall. And he comes up hobbling, so he's going to have to come off the field for a play here and, and get wrapped up. Dover has no timeouts too, Pat. Let's remember that. No, they don't. You're exactly right. Two minutes to go. I got to smell a hot dog. I smell it. Smell yeah, they, they send in um, Robert Shaw in for Parker there. Smells good. Cosme, here we go. It's enough about food. Third down and five. Well, we'll have to talk about food in a little bit. <laughs> look at you. Look at you, the <laughs> king of the segue. <laughs> king of the segue. And delay a game. I mean, you would think I don't this know is how it's not. Be. They don't have a timeout. And officials have not. I don't know what that legal substitution, maybe. Yeah. Yep. So that'll move it back. Forty-two to six, halftime score. St. George's gets on the board. Recording uh, ten minutes to go until the first half. Salesian leads Caesar Rodney, twenty-two to eight. So CR on the board. Nick. Wow. Okay. Well, they, they, struck, they could not find the end no, zone against, against Dover, Dover last Dover. week. But yeah. Able to get one uh, in against the Souths. A lot of confusion. Well, I don't know what's going on down there. And they're talking to Timpson too. They're saying, well, if you call a legal substitution, what's the penalty? Because nothing's changed. They're still on the same yard line, and maybe it was an inadvertent whistle. I don't know. 
nonetheless, you're right. No, well, it, it was a five-yard penalty. Third down and nine. Okay, there you go. Approaching a minute and a half to go here until half. Cosby back to throw. He's going to put no one up there. in the air. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, it wasn't the worst throw in the world. It's just his receiver was just not prepared. That was Elijah no. Bowers. He did route. not find the ball in the air. And lucky uh, for Dover, that fell incomplete. But good stop by punt. Apo. Hey, here's a punt now. Is it going to McConomy? Who's going to be back for the punt? It's back in the day. Punt Jeff Eagles. Punt it out of bounds. <laughs> Don't punt it to Deshaun. Don't punt it to Deshaun. <laughs> This is about two yards short if I'm right, 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 Fat? He picks it up and that's it. The second miracle at the Meadowlands. That's it. Number two, <laughs> according to Mike Quick. Number two. I had a great Brian Westbrook was up at the Grotto. I saw that, man. Last night. I saw, that. saw that. Some good, some good photos. Some Eagle legend. Yes. Thought about stopping by, but one of my top guys didn't uh, get up there. Played for the birds. Oh, oh when he hits, they the get a piece of Yoder. That punt gets away. McConaughey. Oh, he, he drops it. it. He muffed it. But he it. got it back. And how about the athleticism to fall on top of it? Yoder wants a penalty. There and is there it a is. penalty marker there it thrown, is. but is it going to be running into or roughing the kicker? Well, that's the question because that's a late penalty flag right and, there. And then th depending on whether it's going to be a first down or not for Dover. Well, we're going to find out. If they say personal foul, it will be. And they call a false, false start. start. Ooh, ah. Wait. I don't know what that was because they pointed to the defense. They pointed to the defense, yeah. And that's usually not. Illegal procedure on Apo. I don't know how that happens on defense. We're, we're keeping an eye on this one, Nick. The officials are coming up with a discussion. If it's five yards, it's just a kick again. And now they wave it off. Oh, okay. So uh, yeah, it was bizarre. I mean, it was a bizarre call there. I thought maybe they were throwing a late flag for running the, into yeah, the, the kicker. kicker. But they yeah. didn't do so. And I'm sure that's what Chip Knapp, head coach at Dover, is down there asking. Like, our, 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 our guy got hit <laughs> on the did. kick, man. But unless it's tipped, it's, you know, then it, there's no penalty. So right. did they say that he tipped it? Didn't look like Maybe it. they did. Maybe they did. Nonetheless, the ball, yeah, I, I believe, say, was yeah. down around the 30. And a minute 16 to go. One timeout for Apo. They have not gone to the air often in this game. So with a run-heavy offense, not a whole lot of chances for big plays. You got to get someone in space then here. Do they elect to just take this Wide one ahead? screen. You see trips to your left, to your right here. And keep an eye on number one, Ethan Osebu. That's what I'm saying right here. They got, you know. Yard in the gun. He'll take the snap. He's going to drop back the throw. He's going to take a chance. He's got two players open. He rushes to the far side. He's going to get sacked from behind. Out of he bounds, gets though. out of bounds. He had two players open over here. He scared, he got out of the pocket a little fast, uh, but the rush was coming. But he had a slant open. With that trips, Dover defense seems like they were like blitzing on that play. Yeah, Powell comes up with the tackle. It ends up actually being a gain of one. A minute eight to go, second down and nine. Again, trips to the field side, so the near side here. To, to our right. But One receiver on the to the boundary. The oh, Yard bobbles it. He's he's in danger zone. He is going to be sacked and dropped for a loss. Bobbled the snap and is thrown down by a, a plethora of Dover linemen. At this point, do you just kneel and go into the half? I mean, Dover doesn't have any timeouts. You almost turned it over there. You don't want to give him the ball in the red zone. Yeah, they're going to take their time. You know, I mean, I would definitely time. take my time. They need one more <laughs> snap to get to the half. Exactly. And you can see they may take a timeout here and go for one last play. It's going to probably be around eight seconds is going to be my guess. Let's keep an eye on this back, Judge. There's five, ten, ten seconds. Yeah, Timpson's going to call the timeout. He's standing there with five, the Judge there now. Four, three. And there's the timeout. So it's going to be 18 seconds to go in the half. Third down and 12 upcoming for Apo. And, you know, Nick, you, oh, you're watching. It. You're, you're the analyst up here. You Are you electing to take a kneel or are you taking a shot? What are you doing? I'm kneeling. I, I, I mean, right now, 
you don't want to you don't want to take the chance of giving up another score and then Middletown I mean and then Dover getting it right back again for the second half. So why would I mean unless you're going to just do a nice safe handoff but we have seen today McConomy fumbled. You know, so mm -hmm. to me, why even risk it? I would just kneel going to the half, you know, because and, – and honestly, right now, Dover's defense is really sniffing everything out. They're trying, so. Yeah, they are. So we'll see what they do here. Looks like they're going to line up and see what the play comes in. He's up under, so. And you see it looks like victory formation there. We got Griffith lined up here with facing the quarterback. Yeah. McConaughey back deep. Yeah, he's There's just the kneeling. knee. Yep. And that is going to bring us to our first half score. What a game down That'll here do at it. Central Crew at Dover Stadium. The Senators, quick strike offense, take a 20 to 14 lead into the half over the Apo Jaguars. We will have a message from, obviously, um, our sponsors here when we come back. We'll, we'll recap the first half. Nick, Nick will have some, some highlights for you. We'll, we'll recap how we got to where we got to. We'll have some scores around the rest of the state as well. Right here on Delaware Live Sports presented to you by 302 Sports. Once again, 20 to halftime, or 20 to 14 <laughs> is your halftime score here. <laughs> I'm Chef Hari Cameron. At Grandpa Mac, pasta's our thing. We serve quality food fast that's not fast food. We make everything in-house and serve something for everyone. We're open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. Follow the noodle to Grandpa Mac. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community based news, free to every reader, because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live, our state, our news, our home. Get the assurance that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high-quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. 302-239-HVAC. 302 Two two three nine four eight two two. Melissa Ellis is part of Four Acre Realty Company. She is licensed in both Delaware and Pennsylvania. Melissa knows that being personable and patient is a key to her success as a realtor, helping both buyers and sellers understand current market values and conditions puts them in the best position when making an offer or pricing a home for sale. That kind of high-level professional communication and her skill at being a team player put Melissa's clients at ease, knowing she has their best interests at heart. Melissa is also an athlete herself, playing multiple sports so she understands what teamwork means. She is still involved in sports, whether it's sponsoring, coaching, or being team mom for her own two daughters' teams. What sets her apart is how grateful Melissa is for the trust of her clients. She never takes that trust for granted. She affords all people respect and honesty and works hard to be the support system clients need and deserve. Melissa Ellis, strong connections, strong service. High school athletics is not what it used to be. The sporting goods industry has been disrupted. Adding to coach and athletic director daily challenges. BSN Sports stands ready to change the fundamentals of our industry, giving our customers the advantages they need right now.
Your dedicated local sales pro is supported with nationwide team service, including sport and category experts. Get the look of D1 colleges and pro teams with our program that streamlines ordering your staff apparel, player gear, and fan wear. Stretch your budget with our fundraising solution. Free and ready in minutes. Our campus branding products are perfect for boosting school and team pride. BSN Sports has the advantages you need right now. Hi, I'm Scott Kammerer from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Matt's Fish Camp in Fenwick Island, Delaware. Come check us out. Matt's Fish Camp features seafood classics, coastal comfort food, and chef-driven specials that pair perfectly with our large selection of craft ales, curated wine lists, and camp cocktails. Matt's offers indoor and outdoor dining and is the perfect place to have dinner with your family, happy hour with friends, or enjoy lunch at the Raw Bar. Matt's Fish Camp in Fenwick Island, Delaware, open seven days a week year-round. See you soon. Barclay Heating and Air. Barclays can work on all brands specializing in air conditioners, gas, oil, and heat pumps. Family owned and operated with over 17 years of experience. Licensed, insured, and a multiple year first aid favorites winner. Barclay Heating and Air offers 24 hour emergency service with service plans available. Customer satisfaction guaranteed. Call 302 653 5971 for a free estimate today. John and Ginger Barclay are looking forward to serving the community. Find them on the web at barclayheatingandair.com. High Five Hospitality, founded in 2004 when three guys teamed up to introduce the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise to Delaware. To date, they operate eight Buffalo Wild Wings in Delaware, Maryland. Also the Stone Balloon and Limestone Barbecue. And let's not forget, Egg Spectation and five Jersey Mikes throughout Delaware. High Five Hospitality's mission is to operate five brands that serve high quality products with exceptional hospitality. Hi, I'm Scott Kammerer from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Lupo Italian Kitchen in downtown Rehoboth Beach. Come check us out. Located inside the Hotel Rehoboth, Lupo serves coastal Italian cuisine with fresh pasta made in-house daily. Lupo features plenty of unique craft cocktails and an extensive award-winning all-Italian wine list. Popular dishes include lobster bucatini, veal meatballs, grilled swordfish, and eggplant parmesan. Lupo Italian Kitchen on Rehoboth Avenue, serving happy hour daily and dinner seven days a week. See you soon. Your home, your community. It's not just where you live, it's where you belong. At Dover Federal Credit Union, we understand what it means to be local. We started here and we're not going anywhere. We're as local as it gets and we like it that way. We're not just a financial institution. We are the local credit union that you can trust. Local people, local decisions. Dover Federal Credit Union. High Five Hospitality was founded in 2004 when three guys teamed up to introduce the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise concept to Delaware. They now operate eight Buffalo Wild Wings, six locations throughout Delaware, and two locations in Maryland. B-Dubs has weekly and game day specials on their delicious food and beverages. Stop in one of their convenient locations today. The Stone Balloon Ale House features a unique blend of crafted food and an array of spirits, all flavored with a dash of nostalgia. Our culinary mantra is comfort food playfully reimagined, and we prepare seasonal favorites that strive to please the palate and resurface a memory. Limestone Barbecue, from our mouth-watering Texas-style brisket fall off the bone chicken and St. Louis ribs, Southern-style sides, mac and cheese, baked beans, cornbread, sweet tea, and our homemade pickles. Be prepared as your bread will be your napkin. Yup, we are that kind of barbecue. Expectation. You'll have a tough time choosing between our exclusive dishes to help get you through the day. French toast, French crepes, Belgian waffles, and of course, our famous Eggs Benedict. High Five Hospitality's mission is to operate five brands that serve high quality products with exceptional hospitality. High Five Hospitality was founded in 2004 when three guys teamed up to introduce the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise concept to Delaware. They now operate eight Buffalo Wild Wings, six locations throughout Delaware, and two locations in Maryland. 
B-Dubs has weekly and game day specials on their delicious food and beverages. Stop in one of their convenient locations today. The Stone Balloon Ale House features a unique blend of crafted food and an array of spirits, all flavored with a dash of nostalgia. Our culinary mantra is comfort food playfully reimagined, and we prepare seasonal favorites that strive to please the palate and resurface a memory. Limestone Barbecue, from our mouth-watering Texas-style brisket, fall-off-the-bone chicken, and St. Louis ribs. Southern-style sides, mac and cheese, baked beans, cornbread, sweet tea, and our homemade pickles. Be prepared as your bread will be your napkin. Yup, we are that kind of barbecue. Expectation. You'll have a tough time choosing between our exclusive dishes to help get you through the day. French toast, French crepes, Belgian waffles, and of course, our famous Eggs Benedict. High Five Hospitality's mission is to operate five brands that serve high quality products with exceptional hospitality. Welcome to Premier Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. We're a locally owned outpatient physical therapy practice with convenient locations in all three counties in Delaware. At Premier, we have experienced physical therapists with advanced credentials, but their hospitality, passion, and enthusiasm is what makes the difference for you. Find our convenient locations at PremierPTSB.com. You may have tried physical therapy, but have you tried Premier? Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Soto Concepts. Today we're at Blue Coast Seafood Grill and Raw Bar in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Come check us out. Located in the Rehoboth Gateway, Blue Coast features indoor and outdoor dining and serves beautiful, simple food that highlights the flavors of Southern Delaware. With chef-inspired daily specials, an award-winning wine list, and an extensive list of craft cocktails and local beer, Blue Coast is the perfect spot for a night out. Blue Coast Seafood Grill in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, open seven days a week year-round for lunch and dinner. See you soon. I would always pass by Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to, it was like they were friends, not, you know, people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like. To have all the seating now and the big table, the bench seats, it's great. I love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day. It was just a great experience. We loved ours. Hi, I'm Scott Kammer from Soto Concepts. Today we're at Fish On in the Villages of Five Points. Come check us out. Fish On is committed to serving beautiful, simple coastal cuisine in a cool atmosphere with a happening bar, spacious dining room, and outside patio. Popular dishes include the seafood stew and fresh oysters from the raw bar. Fish On's recently renovated event room and is the perfect spot for your next event. Fish On and Lewis in the Villages of Five Points open seven days a week, best happy hour around. See you soon. How you doing? My name is Mike Cassidy. I'm the founder and president of Cassidy Painting. I started back in 1984, incorporated in 1986. I never had the word no in my vocabulary. Uh, when someone called me to do a job, I always said yes. Whether it was a struggle, whether it was seven days a week, uh, sun up to sundown, it, it didn't matter. And with that philosophy, we were able to grow to the size we are. We employ close to 80 uh, individuals. We really enjoy being in the family business. Um, I look forward to coming to work every day. And it's so nice to work with the people that we work with in the office. Uh, we've really become a family with them. We really create a family experience around here. The Cassidy Painting is a very diversified company. We don't say no to anything. 
we deal with everything from epoxy floors to painting buildings to uh, spray foam insulation, spray fireproofing. If it deals with a coating, we can handle it. So when our customers call and they're under the gun and they know the need to get a job done, they know who to call because we perform. We've always been performed. We've never been replaced out of 37 years of business. For any of your painting needs, we can handle it. And we're here at the break on Delaware Live Sports, right here at Dover Stadium. As you can see, the homecoming court being announced onto the field. Dover holds a six-point lead, 20-14, to 14, over the Apoquinimic Jaguars. Pat Garianis, Nick Halliday here with you. And Nick, taking a look at the stats here, it was an impressive first half by the Senators' bunch. Yeah, um, looking at the stats, you know, over 100 yards rushing and over 100 yards receiving. Um, and a couple of big plays that really helped get them uh, lifted. Two big touchdown catches for Parker, uh, John Parker, who 143 yards on two catches, a 76-yard and a 67-yard touchdown. Um, you know, and then Cosme had the 27-yard run. And I'm sorry, actually, I should put the rushing yards on. I missed it. It's 127 yards actually rushing um, for that team uh, for the Dover Senators. So there's your three touchdowns um, and your and your rushing yards. So, I mean, Dover right now, you can see, is, is leading it uh, over uh, them right now in total yards. Right now it's just been all McConomy, 17 rushes for 92 yards, unofficial, and he's got a 25-yard touchdown. Um, and then he also has the 93-yard kickoff return, return right. which are the two touchdowns for them. So uh, right now... We have a 2014 um, Dover lead, and those two big touchdowns for Parker right now are uh, are looking the to difference. be huge. 270 total yards offense for the Dover Senators, and we mentioned McConomy. He's at what 185, 185 total yards between all-purpose yards between the all-purpose. You're right, the returning and rushing. So yeah, he, had, uh, he had over 300 all-purpose yards, I think, last game with the mm -hmm. or or against CR with the 85-yard touchdown too. So. But Dover's been sniffing him out right now in that mm -hmm. second half, and they're really pinning their ears back and, and going against the run. So we'll see. Apo's going to have to come out with a different game plan because they got, they got the run game sniffed down. That they do. So Apo, they got the two early touchdowns. It's pretty much been all Dover since. And uh, we'll see how the second half continues. Dover will start with the second half kickoff. Taking a look, a couple other scores around the state. K. Penlopen has a 14-7 lead heading into halftime over top of Delmar. Uh, so that's okay. something to keep an eye on. It's 10-0 Malvern Prep. The Friars uh, up 10 to nothing about halfway through the third quarter over top of DMA. Mm -hmm. It's 14-all at the St. Mark's Archmere game. Oh, look at that. Albero just connected on a 29-yard pass to Ryan Hagenberg on a fourth and sixth play. So third quarter there. 14 to 14 is the score. It's 35 to 6. Caravel over top of Odessa in the first half. Uh, Odessa, Isaiah Melton returns a, a fumble 70 yards to put the Ducks on the board there. Thanks to Andre Smith for that one. Um, and it looks like, uh, yeah, Smyrna well in hand. 42 to 6 at the break over top of St. George's. It's a 22 to 8 Silesianum lead over top of Caesar Rodney. So a lot of great games. Looks like St. E's got a big time 39 to 14 victory over Indian River. Five touchdowns in that game for Kasim Benson. Yeah, 35, uh, 35 is the final. Yep. Tower Hill got a big time win earlier today over St. Andrews. Last score that I had seen was a 49 to eight win. So the Hillers really put it on St. Andrews in that game. Uh, and then of course the game right here is 20 to 14 so a lot of great games going around got to give a shout out here nick before we go to commercial break <laughs> got to give a shout out to the dover marching band oh yeah the halftime performance that we took in here prior to coming on was tremendous, tremendous. earth wind and fire they did about four songs got to give those those ladies and gents a big time shout out very very entertaining but 
Uh, Nick, we are, that's it for halftime. We've got second half action coming up in about two, uh, two and a half minutes to go. But before then, we're going to send it yeah. to our top, top plays, plays of the week. Here we go. It's time for your Delaware Live Sports Top Plays of Week Number 4, presented by BSN Sports. Let's get started at number 10 with Newark Charter, Jordan Williams to McKenna Ritchie to Leela Saylor for the point. There it is. First, it's Williams. Ritchie able to get it up, and then Saylor over for the point, and Newark Charter getting us started at number 10. On to number nine, it's Malik Pinkett here first. We got two plays for you. He's going to get the toss on the outside, make a defender miss there, and then he's off to the races. A 40-yard toss for a touchdown for the freshman from Red Lion, Malik Pinkett. Now over to Dover, Jaquan Kilby. How about one, two, three missed tackles, and then he's going to be able to get into the end zone. Two big 40-yard touchdown runs there at number nine. On to number eight. Again, another fantastic field goal. This one from Sam Crossan from Red Line. A 46-yarder in the elements at home against Milford. Able to bury it. The longest field goal to date in the state of Delaware. On to number seven. Head over to that Smyrna offense. Brian Wright to Nolan Fretz. This is how you high point a football. Wright going to put it down the sideline. Wait where his receiver can go get it. And Fretz leaps up, pinpoints it, and hauls it in. Catch it at his highest point, young guys. Over to number six and Dover. You heard from Kilby. Now how about Nasheen Cosme here? This time, he's going to fake it and keep it himself. See you later, Cosme. When you got Kilby, that'll fool the defense. He's going to be off 10-5 into the end zone. Dover, clicking on all cylinders right now. Over to number five in Delmar, Jalen Johnson is going to break one off here against Woodbridge. They fake the quick hitter, then get it to him. He's going to make the safety miss, and then here comes the speed. Down the sideline for Jalen Johnson, untouched, into the end zone early in the first for Delmar. On to number four. Got to see this one up close and personal. Evan Buttinger to Kyle Manley. These two continue to do it all season long. Here's a straight three-step drop back, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Let him go get it as Manley goes and makes the catch. And then here comes the yard after the catch. Reverses field into the end zone for the first score of that game. Red line looking good in that win over Milford. This one courtesy of Wilmington Friends Athletics. This is a game-winning goal. Sawyer Rowland to Cora Lowcamp. There's the pass. There's the finish. There's the game winner. Again, Rowland to Lowcamp, and Friends gets the victory. Over to number two, Jacob Zeigler here. This one courtesy of WSAL. Hodson looking back to pass up 7-0. Can't find the receiver. Instead, find Ziegler, who's going to go the other way. 70 yards, turning it into six for the defense. What an interception return for a touchdown right there for Salesianum. Over to number one, this one courtesy of James Simmons Sr. And why not when James Simmons is going to do this for Mount Pleasant? Here's the kickoff. He'll field it around the 18. Going to look for some blockers. Jumps over a little hole there. And then going to get to the sideline, to the 40, to the 30. Has a few defenders there. Just uses the speed to blow right by into the end zone. A huge kickoff to the house for James Simmons as your top play of the week. Beautiful full moon night here. It doesn't get any better than this as we approach the first weekend of October. Full moon. It's officially fall, right? Dover High School. You're exactly right. Pat Gary Andy's Nick Halliday with you as we're about ready for second half action right here at Dover Stadium. As we had mentioned, Dover with a 20 to 14 lead. They will be receiving the second half kickoff after deferring in the first half. And you know, Nick Halliday, as we get ready to go, I mean, what are you looking to see out of both of these teams in the second half? Well, you know, I mean, uh, right now, Dover's got to keep the pressure on. Um, you know, you don't want to give the ball back, no more turnovers. Uh, they got to keep feeding Kilby, but, the, you know, right now the ace in the hole has been the passing to John Parker. And as you see, neither team is going to kick deep this middle. Oh, boy, we got a big fella returning yeah. it. How about that? <laughs> Milligan <laughs> takes it. To Chris Berman. <laughs> Whoop. Like Rumbling, what? stumbling, bumbling. The dancing bear, Tyjon Milligan. He had he had his eyes on the end zone right there, man. Yeah, Pat. Well, you know, we heard in the halftime. I don't think either team's kicking deep. No, you got two. You got electric return, man. I, I understand. You already saw one. You already saw one, right? Mm -hmm. But for Do for for Apo, they really got to change it up. Dover has really got them figured out on offense, and uh, as good as McConomy is, if they know what's coming, it's going to be tough. So. Absolutely. So we'll see. We'll see what adjustments are made by both coaching staffs as we got ourselves a good game right here starting the second half off. 
John Parker's going to start in the slot. Kilby in the backfield. Cosme in the gun. He'll take the snap. Go to Jaquan Kilby. He's around the edge. He breaks a tackle. Husser comes up with the tackle. But a two or three yard gain on first down for the Senators. I tell you what, man. This kid Kilby. I mean, uh, both of these guys. I mean, these two running backs. I, I talk about a great running back class. I yeah, mean, and I know they're I know. not all in the same grade, but, know, but like right now, the running watch. backs in Delaware between these two, you got Holman, you got Pearson, and I know there's other guys, like Benson, and there's a ton of other guys as well. I mean, I don't have the time right now in between plays to name <laughs> them all, but the running backs in this state are elite right now. Yeah, yeah, even though he's yeah. considered a uh, – Wide receiver, he does a lot out of the gun. Yeah, and there's a broken play there. and Cosme runs right into the big old hands of Demir Milam. And it's a third down and long here on this opening possession of the second half for Dover. And that's what the Apo defense is going to have to do. they got to stop it. Now, you got to pay attention here again. Third and long, look for the play action. Don't be fooled. Don't get sucked up. Tell your DBs, nothing over your head. Keep your players in front of you because you're going to be looking for Parker here. And Parker's going to be the, the play the action. You're going to get the fake. But I'd be looking for Parker here if I'm uh, top of Apo. your screen. Screen. The Kilby. He's got open. room. He's got room. He's going to try and outrun. He cuts it back at the 30. Oh. Bounces into a couple of guys. I think he ran into his own no man. Player. He'll go down at the 20-yard line. But what a call right there for Coach Chip Knapp, this Dover offense. Good and they call. get a big time first down in red zone. That's a big time call there, and you got to throw a wrinkle in, right? They're 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 sinking in, they're looking, and that was a great screen set up. And Cosme had great time to set that up to get that ball into uh, Kilby there. First and ten, he gets down to the 19 officially. So that that went about close to 40 yards. Parker, lone receiver to the top side of the screen. Cosby's going to keep this one. Milam unblocked. He'll come up with the tackle. I'll tell you what, he did a good job, though, of making something happen. Shane comes up with the tackle as well. He picked up three three yards there with two guys that were unblocked. <laughs> I know, they were right there. And, uh, good tackle and uh, gets a few yards out of it, something that was not going to be any yards. So nice play by him. He's a playmaker, though. I mean, he had a 55-yarder uh, last week here against CR. He broke that long run. Second down and seven. Cosme takes the snap. He's going to go up the middle to kill B. There's not much room there. About a yard. Maybe a yard, and I'll tell you what. Cracking down the, the line there for a big time play was Ali Ali Kamara. It's a great job by number twelve in white. It's a classic name there. Ali Kamara. Mm -hmm. He made a few plays here tonight. He has. Yeah. Obviously he had the uh, the fumble recovery early in the game. Nice play right there. On a lovely night. Dover, Delaware. Nice down here. State capital. Cosme gives this one to Kilby up the middle, and he's tackled by Hussler. He was he was close to breaking that one, and big Elijah Hussler be about prevented three that. Three yards short, though, of the first down. Obviously, this is three uh, four down territory. All right, looks like the field goal unit's coming in. Here comes Yoder with the okay. kicking tee. All right, okay. We've seen it. He can do it. This will get. Oh, well, this is smart. It's going to give Dover a two-possession lead if they're able to convert. Push this to a two-score lead. He's got the leg. Yoder's definitely got the the leg. Mm -hmm. See our cameraman Logan Gashler going to let us know where the uprights are. Snaps good. Holds good. Kick is up. It's short. Short. Did not get I don't know if he got it down onto the uh, the tee or ah, not. Yeah. But he did not get that one up. No lift That's on a, that kick. That ends up being a nice stop for Apo. 
and they needed that. Talked to, we talked about it towards the end there. Their defense was on the field a lot in that second quarter. Yes. You know, the, the touchdown was nice to have because it's a kickoff return, but it did keep the defense, right, put the defense back up, right back on the field, and Dover had a couple of good drives. So, so Dover can't convert on their opening drive of the second half. Here comes this Apoquinimic offense. From DMC, man, again, we, we got to highlight that nickname for <laughs> economy. That's just tremendous. Works out perfectly, doesn't it? <laughs> awesome. Yards under center. He's going to go to McConaughey. He's got some room up the middle, and that's a good first down run. Nice job by that offensive front. Second down and two. Yard again under center. Gives it back to McConaughey. He cuts up the middle. There's not much Nowhere. room. He's going to fight forward to the, maybe the line of scrimmage. Coming in there for the Dover defense, number 14, Bryant Hartwell. Yeah, he was right there. He got about a yard, uh, half a yard. Third down and one. Decisions, decisions. Yeah. A lot of time getting this play in for Apo. Let's keep an eye on this back judge here on the play clock. There's, There's the 10. ten. Yard got to get up under there. Five. Before they get it off, they go to McConaughey. He gets the first down. Got it. Good blocking up front by Apo. Five yards in a cloud of uh, tire pellets. <laughs> it used to be dust, but they no longer play on the dust anymore. Yeah, not anymore. They do unless you got the Bermuda, you know. Oh, the Bermuda's tremendous. Tatton will still have that. The Hornets always had the Bermuda grass. It was tremendous. It was a great, the great surface to play on. Yeah, they do. Back in the day. St. Mark's has it. Red Lion has it. Yep. You know, there's a few. Delmar, I think. I can't remember. I know, they're, I know the one middle. of their fields is... Uh, one of their fields is, uh, I think it's their soccer. I think their football field is probably turf by now, but not sure. But it was grass back in the day. It was regular grass. They gave did. three. Got okay. like three or four yards on that play, yeah. I mean, unofficially, he had like 17 attempts in, in the that first, first half. half. Yeah. I think it was more along the lines of 18. I think I missed one, but uh, still. That's why they're I mean, unofficial. He's, he's averaging probably f around 40. Uh, 40 attempts a game. Yeah, McConaughey's been, I mean, talk about a, a workhorse. I know. There you go. They go reverse. Osebu, he's got uh -oh. a lane. Cut back. He fumbled the Fumble ball. It. It's loose. Ball's out. There's a penalty marker on the field, but that ball was jarred loose. What a job, I believe, that was Ja'Kai Tillman poking that one loose on the hit. Let's see what the penalty is. But they sprung Osebu, and he was making some moves. Yeah, that was a nice run, but got to gotta secure that ball. Tillman knocked it out. Let's see, the penalty marker, and let's see if there's a ruling on this fumble. Who recovered it? We got a hold Holding, against so Apo. De decline. And I believe we have Dover possession. Yeah. That's declined, and the fumble's going to give the Senators the football. How about that? Wow, another turnover. Ethan Osebu, the junior wide receiver, on the end around, he picked up the first down. He Nick. did. He had plenty. Yeah, but Tillman just he just punched the ball, peanut Tillman style. It's <laughs> like yeah, his name. That yeah. is, yeah. Good old Charles Tillman used to play for the Chicago Bears. They always He's punch notorious now, man. for that. Yeah. Notorious for that. Now you watch, they're all punching, trying to punch that ball out. No, you secure the tackle with one arm. Yep. You look to knock the ball out That's with it. the other. Another turnover, though. This play's blown, blown dead. dead. Not sure what the reasoning on that is. Under five minutes to go in the third quarter. This game's been 
pretty brief, uh, pretty briskly paced. It has been, yeah. The first half went, went by really uh, quick. But, again, both teams like to run the ball. So, you know, not too much clock stoppage unless you go out of bounds. First and 10, 49 yard line. Parker comes in motion. Kilby up the middle. Picks up about three yards on the play. Tackle made Antoine Osborne. Number eight was leading the way, leading the charge that time for Apo. Two yard pickup. I tell you what, it's a great night. Beautiful night, Nick. It'd be a yeah. wonderful night for some chili. Hey, you think it, speaking of that, I mean, you know, last night I was next to the fire too, but uh, that works great. for with the it's chili. Great. But I want to give a shout out. Not only is she one of our our sponsors, but uh, she also gave us our our uh, game time meal today yeah. of chili. Melissa Ellis. It's tremendous. It is Melissa. great. Very very flavorful. Dropped off some chili today, and me and you got to eat it on the ride down. It was it was damn good. Does, it doesn't get much better. No, it really doesn't not get at much all. Better. Like I said, it's great. It was a great day, great night for it. Some cornbread. Oh, the corn. Man, we had we had but we had. What can you ask for? Dude, we were eating like the players. It was elite. Elite meal. <laughs> Appreciate it, obviously. Appreciate that one. Yes. That pass fell incomplete. Third down and long. Pete leads Delmar 14-7 now. At the half, yep. 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 Just got the text from Glenn. He's away. He's at the 50th anniversary. Still looking in. Congratulations to Glenn <laughs> on that, too. I mean, that's got to be fun. Don't right? have too much fun, Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> What do we got here? I'm sure he's out there hitting the jitterbug. We were talking about that at one of the games. He know. got offended by that. I we, know. <laughs> we, did. We, we, told, we, we, we told Glenn, man, uh, you guys going to hit it. He goes, that's not us. That <laughs> we're not doing class that, Class of man. 72, and I'm telling him he's doing that. That's the 52. <laughs> class of 52. Don't age me too much. Right? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, he's one of a kind, man. Glenn, one of the best in the business. Glenn, yeah. I, hope, I hope you have a good weekend. I hope you do, yeah. Have a good weekend. Yeah. Missing a good one, though, I got to tell you. Missing a yeah, good oh, one. Oh, I'm sure. It's a little huddle up there by the officials. Not sure what happened, but we're back to play. Glenn, Glenn just texted. He said, I missed one game <laughs> and you got a pregame meal? <laughs> hey, Glenn, I'll make sure I bring some sandwiches oh, next man. week. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Cosme's going to let this one rip. He's going to Parker. Oh, oh almost Griffith almost came away with the pick. Wow. He led the state in interceptions, interceptions last year. He almost yeah. had one in his paws right there. And that time he was on it. That Cos Good try. That Dover's taking their shots, man. They are. They've had, they've had Parker a few times on this wheel, almost like a wheel route. And Griffith came over, nearly came away, but that wasn't a terrible ball no. by Cosme. No, he's actually thrown pretty well this yeah. year, if you ask me. He had a couple of Parker, a uh, couple last week that were nice throws, and today he's had really nice throws. The two two touchdowns mm -hmm. to Parker in the first half went for 67 and 76 yards, and uh, he's been on point. Update from the graveyard, thanks to Mike Lang. We're tied at 14, going to the fourth. Yoder gets off a great one. McConomy comes up. He muffs did it he, again. He, okay, he got but he it. Falls on it. He's uh he's struggling holding on the ball today. Hey, listen, I you know here here's my whole thing. I've been saying this for a few years, Nick. I know you've heard me over the years say this. Punt returning has has become a lost art form. So many guys have just they just let the ball bounce and you lose all of these yards yeah, in field tough. position. McConomy's coming up trying to make some plays. I, I give him I'll give him credit on those. Yeah, but they're dangerous. Luckily for him, the, right there, know. he was able because that ball. I mean, that's inside the twenty yard line. That may bounce. I mean, that may they may get pinned inside the exactly. five if he doesn't come up and try and save the field position. That's there. true. That's true. Got to. He, he he's he's not doing really good with his ball security. It's hard. I mean, it's hard to field those those, yeah. those punts. Well, he's got that big fumble. He had mm -hmm. the the punt, and then that second punt uh, nearly came out too. So, got to secure the ball though. Still only find themselves down six points. That's though. right. Under four minutes to go here in the third. Not much there from economy. Good job by Dover. Swallowing them up. Again, another another week. And the Jaguars are hanging around with some of the, the, the top teams in the state. I mean, 
this is a program. Last year they started off, I'm not mistaken, weren't they like 0-5? 1-5 and five to start the year yeah, off yeah. to get McConomy back. And since they've gotten McConomy back, they have competed week in and week out. And, you know, kudos to the coaching staff, too. When they had Von Brandt, they, they started to run him more. They started to do that yeah. triple option and running it, and it worked out. And they were in the playoffs. Yep. McConomy Nowhere. swallowed. Oh, he broke, th he broke through. Got through that tackle. Gets across the 25. From Jamar Harris. And Harris was there. He just couldn't bring him down. Look at him. Hands on the helmet. I can't uh, believe I missed yeah, him, Coach. Yeah, he's not happy. <laughs> can't believe I missed him. <laughs> Got about four yards on that. There's a final. Glenn, thanks for the final. Smyrna gets that win, 42-6 to six yeah, over St. George's. So that was probably a running clock for a while. Two and a half to That's go. That's why that game's already. Third down and four, Nick. Not much action in this quarter at all. Yard will take the snap. He's going to look to throw. No, He's he sacked hit. in the backfield. Coming off the edge, here's this young man yet there again, Jalen. I'm sorry, that is Nasir Snipes Guzman. Yeah, great name. That's an all-namer. Tell you what, Nasir, he's made big play after big play in this game, number seven in blue. Yard had no time there either, Pat. He, nope. Like you said, he, number seven in blue was right on him as soon as he got that snap. It was no time for him to do much. Snipes Guzman, senior linebacker. Pat, I'm not even Big sure. Knife. Yeah, maybe Apo did, but in this quarter right now, with a, only a minute and some left, neither team has really eclipsed more than 25 yards in this quarter. No, there hasn't been much there. This ball's going to bounce. Going to pick it up. Darden Jefferson's got it. He's got some room to boogie. Goes across <laughs> the 40-yard line. Nice. A couple nice Euro steps. Nice good field position here for Dover. 37 yards. All Dover's got between them and the goal line. Start this possession off. That was nice work by Tamir Darden Jefferson. Made a couple of mi nice moves there, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Break himself free. Some very elusive players on these teams. Man. Malvern Prep extending the lead 17 to nothing over DMA thanks to the Delaware High School Football Podcast there for the updates. Yeah. Look at Parker. this, they get it to Parker in space. He breaks through across the 30, the 25, and pushed out of bounds. Heck of a start to this drive for Dover. Picks up about 12 on that, and a first down for Parker. So, man, between him, I mean, this, this three-headed beast that they got between I him, <laughs> Parker, or between him, Kilby, and, and Cosme. Cosme. I know, man. You know, and then you add these young guys. That got chances to make plays. Cam Jones, Bowers, Cole. They got a lot. Here's Parker again. Nice job stringing that out by the Apo defense. That was Griffith coming up from the safety position to make the play. Young man's a player, isn't he? He is, man. He's another great sophomore. Make him out of here making plays. Didn't get anything on that. Griffith looks like he's a little shook up there, but he's a player. You know he's coming back there. Yeah, and then some of these guys are they're playing both sides of the ball, man. Oh, yeah. Well, he's doing all three. That's what I'm saying. He's it, on it, special teams. It definitely drains you. I had the pleasure of meeting his father last year. Great great guy, great kid, and it was nice to see his uh, success. Cosme will roll out the pass. He's got to get the hips flipped. He doesn't do it. He's going to run and get out of bounds. Smart play by the junior quarterback. It's uh, most of the that yeah. that yardage here. It's going to set up third yards. down and, and three. Yeah, that was good. At, nice of him to see he didn't have it tuck and take the yardage that he could get instead of trying to force something. And uh, like you said, now it makes a manageable third and short. Now they're in that earthquake. And it's there Parker, it is. he's, he's gone. got space. Touchdown, John Parker, as Dover extends their lead. What a run, good block in there, Nick, and he was untouched into the end zone. 
as he pushes his out to a 12 point lead. He does right there and he had three touchdowns out of that formation last game against CR and it didn't work in the first quarter. It does now and he tramples in for 25 yards and that touchdown. That's his third touchdown of the game, Pat. Wow. Soft, the super sophomore, he's been yes. electric here tonight. Yes, he has. Yoder on for the extra point. Snaps good, hold looks good, kick is good. As our cameraman Logan Gasher looks to get the fireworks is and see it, if they set, there they go. There they go. It's a party out here in Dover. 27 14, Senators on top. We'll be back right here on Delaware Live Sports after this. Your home, your community. It's not just where you live, it's where you belong. At Dover Federal Credit Union, we understand what it means to be local. We started here and we're not going anywhere. We're as local as it gets, and we like it that way. We're not just a financial institution. We are the local credit union that you can trust. Local people, local decisions. Dover Federal Credit Union. 27-14, Dover leading Apoquinimink here at Dover Stadium. 24 seconds to go here in the third. It's been a John Parker show here, ladies and gents. Nick, talk to us. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, I was just telling you off air, he's got three touchdowns again today, and we still have a whole fourth quarter to go. He's got a 76-yard touchdown pass, a 67-yard touchdown pass, and now a 25-yard touchdown uh, run, and that's three touchdowns for Mr. Parker. Unbelievable. Unbelievable from that young man today. Here's Yoder kicking this off. They're going to go deep, but it's going to be Whistle. stopped. Oh, it's going to be offside. It's going to be eight. offside. Yeah. 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 Right, this will move it back five. And it looks like they're kicking it deep, so they're taking a chance. Now, I'll say this. McConaughey's not back there. It's Bell and it's Griffin. <laughs> well, you, well, you know, the, the young man, he's been toting the load so often, I mean, you want to try and get some kind of a break in here somewhere, I, right? I agree. I, I, I so agree with you. I mean, that's what you're seeing. Yoder's going to line up, look to beat this one deep. Dover with the two score lead. Yoder drives this one. It's gonna be fielded at the 14 by Bell. Bell up the middle is oh. tackled. Nice hit at about the 30 yard line. Tackle made on the play by Tillman, number 15. Yeah, I mean, he stopped him right in his tracks on that, didn't he? Yeah, Bell was moving. Yeah, yeah he was he moving. Was, he was. No matter who was gonna hit him, there was gonna be a collision. <laughs> He's got some speed. Yeah. First and 10, 30 yard line. Apo needs to make some things happen. Yeah, down two. Gotta do something different here. And right now they only have 24 yards in this quarter. They're gonna get the air game going. Here's Osebu. Up close to the 40, nice first down play there through the air for Apo. First completion of the game. It's big, nine yard gain. Nine yards. And, you know, this is this is gonna be important for Apo as his season evolves. Right now they're, they're relying very heavily on, on Mr. Everything, which I get, I mean, he's that special. Uh -huh. But if they can establish, it's much like we saw with Smyrna, Nick. We talked about Smyrna earlier in the year when they played Middletown. They, they weren't able to really get the passing game going and Middletown pinned their ears back. Well now, seems like Smyrna's gotten that passing game going with Wright and it makes that offense way more dangerous when you don't know if you're gonna run or you're gonna pass. Exactly. And uh, they need that, you know? Well that'll do it for it, that's the quarter. Fast quarter, Pat. That will do it, we're through three. Dover gets the only score of the quarter.
They now lead 27-14 as we head into the fourth. Melissa Ellis is part of Four Acre Realty Company. She is licensed in both Delaware and Pennsylvania. Melissa knows that being personable and patient is a key to her success as a realtor. Helping both buyers and sellers understand current market values and conditions puts them in the best position when making an offer or pricing a home for sale. That kind of high-level professional communication and her skill at being a team player put Melissa's clients at ease, knowing she has their best interests at heart. Melissa is also an athlete herself, playing multiple sports so she understands what teamwork means. She is still involved in sports, whether it's sponsoring, coaching, or being team mom for her own two daughters' teams. What sets her apart is how grateful Melissa is for the trust of her clients. She never takes that trust for granted. She affords all people respect and honesty. And we're back here, ladies and gentlemen. There's a tackle for loss on the play. They went to McGonomy again, and there's just no room. As Snipes Guzman got another tackle, number seven, set up third down. And six. Yeah. 28-14, score update, 28-14, Archmere over St. Mark's in the fourth. Is that pump faked? Looking first down, nice job. I'll tell you what, that's good work right there by Jacob Yard finding his intended target, Mason Reinhardt. He got another 14 yards on that. So that first down. Those two scores for, for Archmere were a deep Albero 56 yard pass. Then they turned around and got a pick six. There it is. Seven minutes. And some change to go at the graveyard there. St. Mark's trailing by 14. What a blow by Archmere there. McConomy up the middle again. He's going to get about three or four. So we're under 11 minutes to go. That was a fast quarter too, Pat. Yeah. I mean, there I wasn't much the action. There wasn't much action at all. Love the pace that we're seeing here. I mean, I, other than that 25-yard touchdown, uh, Dover only had 10 yards. Wow. Well, probably yeah. 14 with the, or 17 with that run from uh, uh, Cosme. Here's a penalty. Kilby's going to tackle McConomy for a no gain. Let's see what the penalty is. Legal shift, yep. It's Conversion. gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. Shift. Gonna hurt right there. Bring up that second and eleven. Well, let's see. Did they decline the penalty? Nope. They're gonna mark it off. Who keeps their dropping? Second down and eleven. Apo with the ball down 14. They gotta make something happen here quick. They wanna keep this thing interesting. What, what's going on now? Discussion, and there's another five. No. Yeah, now one more yard. One more yard, okay. Second down to 12. Yard in the gun. Start the clock on me. Economy in the background. Yard dropping back to pass. He's gonna look. He's pumping, looking to run. He's got some room. Can't make nice a man tackle. miss. What a tackle right there in the open field by Joshua Porter. Yeah, nice tackle. Because if not, he was gonna he was breaking that. He would have got another 10 yards after that. Porter comes up and makes the great open field tackle. Yes. Now third down and nine upcoming. Oh, I'm sorry, that was uh that was 20, and that was peace. Jalen Peace, 29, came up and made the play. They go with the reverse. He's got here. room. 
Osebu, first down. Boy, can he fly, and that's going to be a late hit. Oh, 15 more yards. 15. 15 more yards. Osebu went flying, but I'll tell you what, that boy can fly, Nick. Yeah, Number one in white. I, I don't, yeah, they got to get him the ball more often. He got about 20 yards on that, and then after that, make it 21 yards, and after that, you're going to get another 15. What a run by Ethan Osebu. And he does have speed. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he got around that corner really fast. We're going to have a late hit There's here. The personal, personal foul, foul, unnecessary roughness. So here you go. Apo's going to have a chance yeah. to punch this one in. A lot of scores, a lot of opportunity here. Score early with enough time on that clock. Yeah, get the ball to where back. if you get a stop, right. Twenty-five yard line. That's where they're gonna mark this one at. Now under nine and a half to go here in the fourth. Twenty-seven fourteen. They go to McConomy here. He's up the middle for five. We got the senator up here with us, Pat. Look. Oh, he's the man. He's the up. The mascot. Up hanging out. The senator mascot yeah, has he's been. Got the bling he's on. been great tonight. It's been all good vibes here at Dover High School. Uh -huh. We've had the fireworks. We've had That's the senator. Cool. We've had the band killing it. We've had great football. McConaughey on the toss. He's got the edge. Oh, oh, he is hit. They closed that quick. That was Stevenson laying the, dropping the wood there. Got another three on that. Third down and two upcoming. Third and two. See where the Jags do here. This is probably two down territory for them. Oh yeah, yeah. You hit that right on. There's no doubt in my no doubt in my mind that they're going for that. You need touchdowns anyway, you know. High formation. Go to McConaughey, up the middle. He no ran way. right into a wall. The cutback lane was there. They didn't see it. Stevenson again makes the play. Yeah, he got no way Back, on he that. May have lost, I, he, he did. lost a yard. I think he did. You're right. Stevenson, another great young talent here. Only a sophomore. Fourth and four. We're under eight minutes. Looks like Apo don't know, they're, they're confused. There's going to have to be a timeout there taken. There you go, you, good call. And there was, they were confused with their alignment, didn't know what to do there, and they're going to take a timeout. We're going to take one with them right here on Delaware Live Sports, powered by 302 Sports. 27-14, we'll be back after the break. Welcome to Premier Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. We're a locally owned outpatient physical therapy practice with convenient locations in all three counties in Delaware. At Premier, we have experienced physical therapists with advanced credentials, but their hospitality, passion, and enthusiasm is what makes the difference for you. Find our convenient locations at premierptsp.com. You may have tried physical therapy, but have you tried Premier? High Five Hospitality, founded in 2004 when three guys teamed up to introduce the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise to Delaware. To date, they operate eight Buffalo Wild Wings in Delaware, Maryland. Also the Stone Balloon and Limestone Barbecue. And let's not forget, Expectation. And five Jersey Mikes throughout Delaware. High Five Hospitality's mission is to operate five brands. Here we go, big fourth down for Apo, I formation. And someone moved, who are they gonna call it on? Looks like they moved up front, but they also moved on the defensive side. And they're gonna say that Apo moved first. So that's gonna make this a little bit harder. Fourth oh, down and yeah. nine. Fourth and nine now.
Still four down territory. They're going for it no matter what, down two scores. Going to spread the field out here. Look out for Osebu. He is in the slot to the near side. They're going to take a shot here. It's going to be high and incomplete. Yard Over got, that, the head. got a little bit underneath that ball and it sailed on. And that's a big stop for the Dover defense. They look to preserve a win here. That's a good start. That Seven is. and a half to go to get off the field. Yeah, that's a big turn, a big stop there. You had them <coughs> threatening almost, you know, into the red zone and uh, penalty and incomplete pass and turnover on downs. And if I'm Dover, I'm just running clock now. Well, and they got the guys to do it between the Cosme and Kilby and Parker. Now Parker's going to be spread out wide, so. Jaquan Kilby, they're going to run an option. Cosme's going to keep it up the middle. Two hands on the football, two-handed monster. He's going to pick up four yards. Tick, tick, tick goes the clock. Dover's got all three timeouts. The Jags, remember, had to burn one on that drive, so only two remaining for them here. Yep. Had to use one there. They didn't know what they were doing coming out of it, and then they get a false start. Five-yard pickup on first down, staying ahead of the chains. And like we talked about, Dover's in no rush to get up there and run their plays, take the time off with a two-score lead, two lead. Cosme, he's going to keep it again. He's going to slide. Smart move by that young man. He's going to be close job. to first down yardage. Good job by him. Here we go, third and one. Earthquake formation, the ball's fumbled. It's still uh -oh. loose. Picked up, oh, oh almost a scoop. It's there. There's a penalty marker on the field. Let's see what it is. But Antoine Osborne, he scooped it up for the Apo D. Let's see what the penalty is. This could be huge. I'm not sure what that what what we got. Let's we're, we're still waiting, but that ball was fumbled. The snap was bobbled. That was almost taken to the house. Parker back. got hit. It was kicked into the hands of Osborne, and he tripped over some bodies. Here we go. What's the call? That's it. Oh, oh it's encroachment on Apo. So that's a no play. It's going to be a first down for Dover. What a break for the Senators. Yeah, that is that's a break, like you said. That was a big turnover there for Apo if they could have gotten it. So that'll end up being a first down for the Dover Senators approaching six minutes to play at the midway point of this fourth quarter. And they are in uh, two clock mode. Yes. Uh-oh. And there's, there's an unsportsmanlike. Is that, is that on the? Uh, Should be an unsportsmanlike, I believe, on the, uh, the Apo, Apo sideline. Yeah. It's Coach Timpson's ha is on the field out there. He's fired up. Yeah, he is. They, they, that was that could have been a game-changing turnover, That's but right. they were lined up in the neutral zone. And I don't think he was happy about that call. So that's just a warning, perhaps. Oh, sideline warning. Okay. Well, let's see. Hold on. May not be. We got a lot of discussion going <laughs> on down here, Nick Halliday. A lot of, lot of real estate being covered out there, too. Entertaining here. Entertaining. We're figuring it out. We need to have uh, insight on the uh, communications with the uh, – 
All right, there is Referee. an official he does the yeah. warning. Side yeah, line. line warning. Yeah. No yardage. No yardage marked off. So after that stoppage, we should be ready for football again. Looks like they're back in that earthquake, Pat. It's worked. And there's another uh -oh. bobble snap. And That's picked up by Osebu, and this time it should count. And it will. And Apo's wow. going to get the ball back again. Wow. Lightning strikes twice. And they've been great on their snaps all night, Nick. Another side, another another flag, though, Pat, just came in late from the sideline again. That's, now, if this is the sideline, again, That's this will be play. after the play. Now that Apo just won't go away. There's a stoppage on Sportsmanlike on Apoquinimic. It's going to be after the play, though. It's still going to be their ball, but now you just. You just got, you got 15 more, and yeah. a, a valuable clock's going to come off. You just made it harder. Not sure so what's going on over at, there. Should put, all, should put it at the 45. I don't know if it's the players or the coaches over there, what's going on on the sideline, though. Well, no. Yeah, it's hard to see. I mean, there's a lot of bodies right there, and there were a lot of them on the field after that play. Looks like they're placing blame on somebody over there that isn't part of the game. This is uh, and this is tough here. I mean, you see Coach Timpson talking it over with the lead official here. Got to try and find a way to, to figure it out right now. You're, you're getting targeted right wow. now, so well now's I mean, the time to be careful. You know, you're not usually not targeted for no reason. So, but that's what I'm saying. You, at this point, you you got to be smart. Got to be smart. I mean, you're down two scores. You need every advantage you can get. You can't be getting in, tr you know, penalties. It looks like whoever it is is in street clothes over there. Yeah, we're not sure. Not sure what exactly is going on. Well, here's what I back. here's what I will notice though. Elijah Husser is on the sidelines and not out there. That's uh, obviously a yeah, a big body on. that is not out on the field for them. See how that bounces. See how they bounce back from that. Economy in the backfield. It's a shotgun formation. Osebu, who's been, a, he's made some nice plays for the Jags, is in the slot to the near side here, in the trips, in the middle. We still have not gotten back under play. All yeah. right, here we go. Here we go. Yard. He's going to take the snap. He's going to drop back to pass. He's looking. He's looking. He's firing to Osebu. It's incomplete. Good coverage out there by the Dover secondary. Tillman as well as Snipes Guzman are out there on the coverage. Incomplete. 28-14 final. Archmere. Goes in. What a bounce back win for the Aux. That man. is, man. After a tough, tough loss to puts uh, down Howard. A, puts down, I believe, a three and two. Well, and then they lost to Friends. Oh, Friends, they yeah. They had back to back right. losses. Yeah. Yard back. Quick delivery, incomplete. Looking for Reinhardt, a little high on his throw. They haven't ran the clock twice. 6.05 to go. So there should be a little bit of time. I know. I was, I was looking at off. it myself. I'm like, I. R They're discussing it down on the field. So another stop it. Another stop it has to know. happen. I thought I had. I had. I had time ran off, and I looked at the clock. It was 6:05, but then it was 6:05 again. I'm like, wait a minute. I'll let that clock run a little bit. They're gonna stop it at 557. There you go. All right. Third and ten for Apo. This could be big for Dover if they can survive the turnover without allowing any points to happen. See if they can do it. 
They go to McConomy. He's broken through, but nice tackle by number 51, Tyshawn Milligan. Called that name a few times today. Brings up, I mean, it's a four-yard gain, but that could have been a huge pickup right there if Milligan isn't able to make the play. Forces a fourth down here. And you got no choice but to go for it. Five and a half to go here in the fourth. Apo trying to stay in this one. Dover looking to preserve the two-score lead. And there he's going to be is. sacked in the backfield. And there's another name we've called tonight, Nasir Snipes Guzman. Big time sack there. And that, that pretty much is going to wrap up right now, I think, Pat. And that's just all the momentum has been running right towards Dover this half. And what a this quarter. what a job by the Dover defense in the second half. They pitched a shutout thus far. They have in the second half defensively. In what has been a big time defensive battle in the second half. After we saw some fireworks in the first half, they have held them scoreless so far. It's been uh, all Dover. You know, Parker again with another touchdown, and Dover's defense has stood stout. And you just don't want to turn over again here if you're Dover. Cosby gives it to Kilby. He's up the middle. He falls forward, a gain of 11. He's just a good old reliable number 21. That's it. Only a junior, folks. Oh, I know. <laughs> Only a junior. McConaughey's a sophomore. <laughs> yep. Well, no, no, they're both juniors. Oh, yeah, he. that's both right. Juniors. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So you just got to run the clock, run the clock, run the clock if you're Dover. Apo's got two timeouts left. Curious to see if they use them at all or not. Go to Kilby again. He's up the middle. He picks up five. That's a good first down run. I mean, I, I think just out of pure competitiveness you do, just because you don't want to concede the win. But you really have to use them in, a, in the right spots, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean that that's that's what I'm thinking and if you get the ball back or you know you don't want to just call them the call them um, when you don't have the ball you know so we'll see second down and five Cosby and Kilby in the backfield we'll give it to Kilby he's got room up the middle gets to about the 30 to 20 or 31 and he stopped. And you see Apo saying that the ball was jarred loose. Looks like they blew the play dead. No. No, I think there was a fumble on the play, Nick. So Kilby coughed it up. All right. And Apo comes away with it. Well, here you go. You're on offense. You definitely use those timeouts now. You got to figure out how to utilize them unless you score quick. We're going to have to make some things happen through the air. Dover, that's that's one thing you don't want to do right now. Secure the ball. Well, they've had a few. They've coughed I it know. up a few times. And usually Kilby is is, is sure-handed. So out comes that Apo offense again, forcing a turnover. Wow. They won't go away. However, they need to get working quickly. Yes. They got to go 71 yards. Run out of and time. you want to go quick. You're under four minutes to go. Mm -hmm. And they're just walking out on the field. And how about this? We're going to have number 56, Eric Methang, come in at quarterback. And that ball is, well, I don't know oh. what just happened there. The ball is popped loose. Apo's going to fall on top of it, but there was bodies. Nobody really knew where to go right there. And they're uh, lucky that ball wasn't turned over. Busted play. Whatever they had called didn't work. Not quite sure why Jacob Yard not on the field. Is he coming back out here now? That I don't think he is. I, I can't speculate anything. I hope he's okay. Yeah. But he is not out there right now. No. Nope. And now you're going to see Greg Nielsen. Gregory Nielsen, a freshman, number 16, come in at quarterback. He's going to drop back the pass. He's going to step up in the pocket. He's going to be dropped 
sacked on the play by Jalen Powell. Third down in about 19. Yeah, and then, you know, you're without your quarterback and your best offensive lineman, so it's tough right now for Apoquinamek, who let's just hope both players are okay. Uh, but uh, right now they're not able to do anything, and this Dover defense is just having its having its way in the second uh, second half. Here we go. And there's a no penalty. penalty. Let's see what they call here. Ball start. So it's going to be third and 24. Nobody, nobody wants to take care of the football no, this quarter, Nick. I it's know, bizarre man. stuff right it here. It is. Totally different second half yeah. than the first. I mean, we've, we've got at least three fumbles. Turnovers, penalties. And one that was called back because of a because of a penalty. So it would have been four four fumbles here. It looks like Apo's gonna take a timeout. Apo takes time. And it gives him one left, Pat. One timeout left. I mean this is it right here. I mean you gotta make you gotta make something happen. You gotta make it quick. 2.25 to go. We'll take a timeout with them. You score 27-14. We'll be right back after this. I would always pass by Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like, from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to. It was like they were friends, not, you know, people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to. Here we go, third down at 24. Freshman quarterback Nielsen in. Nielsen drops back, he looks, he fires across the middle. He's got a guy, it's Griffith, and that's a catch. He gets. Makes this a fourth down and nine. Nice poise in the pocket by the freshman. Yeah, you get about 16 yards on that. Finds Griffith for six, uh, about 15. About 15, yeah. Actually, yeah, we'll, we'll say uh, we'll say that was 16. So fourth and eight. And yeah, the punting unit will come onto the field. Clicking down under two minutes here, Pat. So. Yep. Fourth down and the punting unit on the field for Apo and what a job by Dover. They weathered the storm in this Did. one. Apo came out feisty. And Dover seems to have weathered it and they're gonna come away with a win here. One gets booted away coming up and oh, it's, it's muffed. muffed. That's the Apo fourth fumble and Apo has it. That's Nehemiah Williams came uh, up trying to make a play. That now go. that time and score, Nick. I've been talking about. I like the aggressiveness. Not with under Not two minutes to go. Two up. minutes ago, you let yeah. that thing bounce. You let that clock wind. You're trying to get out of here. He did, he he obviously hasn't played infield before. He, a you young know, you're man. supposed to come get that on the high hop, not on the on the low. You know, Nehemiah is a sophomore. That's yeah. a learning moment for that young man. Yeah, but you you get to just let it roll. Apo offense going to come right back out onto the field. Gregory Nielsen. Young man, freshman in the game at quarterback. Going to drop back. He's going to roll out to his left. He's going to look to throw. He's going to find a receiver, and it's complete at the 40. That's... Number 17, Noah Hoff. A little bit of rhythm here from Nielsen, the quarterback. Two completions already off That's the it. bench. Yeah. We still have one timeout. Second and five. Getting this offense lined up. I'll tell you what, I got like I like what I'm seeing from this young man. He's got this team up control. He's rolling out here to the right. He's got a guy. It's Osebu. It's a little low, but it's caught. Going to be about a three yard gain. About 48 seconds to go. He's getting his guys lined up. They're getting the signals out there. Yeah. 
30 seconds to go here. Nielsen dropping back. He's going to take a shot. He's going to go deep to Griffith. It's tipped and, and incomplete. incomplete. That was Tillman, and look who it is. <laughs> Coming over there trying to make a play, Tyron Abrams. Abrams. He has, they haven't gone after him at all tonight. No, well, not after the pick. Not after, yeah, exactly. <laughs> 24.8 to go, fourth down. For the freshman quarterback, he had to come in. Uh, again, we, we can't speculate what happened to Jacob Yard. Hope, hopefully everything's okay with that young man, the sophomore quarterback. Fourth and three. They're going to go to McConaughey. He's up the middle. It breaks across the 25. He's knocked down. Penalty marker Flag. on the field. 19 seconds to go. We'll see what this is. It's got to be a hold down that far of the field, you think? Or a block in the back? We're going to find out. Face mask. I lied. So there you go. 19 seconds to go. Zappo call a timeout, trying to score, and then you hope for like the onside kick miracle. That's what you got to do. You got to strike fast. They're at the 20 <laughs> yard line. Looks like they, they do take a timeout. Only got 19 seconds left. Oh, there goes the clock. It's yeah. running. They're not even on the field right now. There's the timeout by Coach Timpson. 14 and a half to go. You got to take a shot. So, I mean, based off of like time here, Nick, yeah, you got to think yeah. they're going to drop back. They're going to throw this ball in the end zone. Hope gotta, they catch gotta it. Got to go for it. Hope you catch it. And then you got to hope you get the onside kick and yep. you're going to throw a Hail Mary. That's it. You don't have much time left. Nope. So, that's what we're going to see. What a game tonight, Nick. I mean, what stood out to you the most so far here in this one? Well, I mean, of course, the big three for Dover, but what about Dover's defense? Mm -hmm. Second half, man, they came out here. I mean, really three quarters, because even in the sec in the second quarter there, they really had this Apo offense sniffed, sniffed out, and they were stopping the run. Um, the only other thing I would say that Dover and and the, both these teams are going to have to do is clean up the turnovers. Yeah, for sure. And it's an, it's going to be another week where Apo competes against a high level team, but just comes up short. Exactly. This team's close. It is. This team is close. It is. 14 seconds, Pat. So here we go. And I got to be honest with you, I mean, this, is, this has been impressive here by Nielsen coming in. Let's see if he's got something in him. Bell comes in motion. They're going to snap the ball. He's going to drop back. He's going to throw it in the middle. He's got a guy. They don't look. Pick and it's Abrams. Off. No, it's not. It's Tillman. He picks it off. He's across the 25, 30. And he's going to be dropped at the 30-yard line. And that's going to do it. Dover's going to get the win. The Senators keep the winning streak going. Five and one on the year. The fireworks are going off. The Senators dancing. Number three team of the state survives a test here tonight from Apo. They did, and uh, defense was just incredible tonight. And uh, they did a great job of holding off McConaughey in this lot, this Apo offense. And uh, congrats to them. And they're still electric on off on offense themselves. You get to see the. Fireworks going off here down in Dover. This is what they like to call the grand finale <laughs> of the fireworks show. But what a game. 27 to 14 is your final score. Dover moving to 5 and 1 as the Apo Jags will fall to 2 and 3. Well, that's going to do it here tonight. What we're going to do is step aside. And come back with our post-game show after this commercial break right here on Delaware Live Sports. Get the assurance that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high-quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. 302-239-HVAC. 302 
Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Matt's Fish Camp in Fenwick Island, Delaware. Come check us out. Matt's Fish Camp features seafood classics, coastal comfort food, and chef-driven specials that pair perfectly with our large selection of craft ales, curated wine list, and camp cocktails. Matt's offers indoor and outdoor dining and is the perfect place to have dinner with your family, happy hour with friends, or enjoy lunch at the Raw Bar. Matt's Fish Camp in Fenwick Island, Delaware, open seven days a week year-round. See you And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to wrap this one up here from Dover Stadium. We appreciate you tuning in to Delaware Live Sports presentation of Delaware High School Football. Final here tonight, 27-14 Dover over Appaquinimic. And Patrick Ariani's here with you, Nick Halliday. Nick, a lot of, a lot of things stood out in this game. A big-time win for the Dover Senators, but uh, the second half is kind of a little bit different than what we saw in the first half, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean... The, the yardage, the, the plays, it was a lot different. A uh, little sloppier, to be honest with you. Turnovers, you know, just things that didn't really go. Like the first half where we had, you know, f five touch, four touchdowns, uh, five touchdowns, sorry, in the first half. We only had one there at the end of the game, in the second half, and that was Parker with a 25-yard touchdown. And uh, Pat, that'll lead me right into, I guess, our player of the game. We'll do. We had a lot, a lot of great guys in this game. A lot of great choices. But yeah, where do we go with Parker? Three touchdowns, two rushing, uh, two receiving, and one rushing, 25 yards. So in total, he had a 75 yards rushing, 143 yards receiving, unofficial three touchdowns, and a long of a 76 yard touchdown pass and catch. It's incredible. That ends up being. Look at this. Adding this up. 218 total yards for John Parker. He, had, of course, had the two big ones in the first half and the big third one here in the second half. Nick, I think that's a great choice there. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a fun night of football here at Dover Stadium. We appreciate you guys tuning in. For Nick Halliday, Logan Gashler on camera. I've been Pat Garanis. Next week, it's going to be great. Glenn Frazier back in the mix. Looking forward to seeing you again, Glenn. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Until next week, have a good night. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned, community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. Our home. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard.